Good evening, everybody. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Um, the first thing I'm going to ask, if you can stand, if you're able, and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Just want to make sure I'm not overlooking, but is anyone here from the Rotary tonight? All right, I thought that was the case, so we're going to skip the Rotary piece. Um, does anyone wish to speak on anything not on tonight's agenda? Thank you, everybody. Um, I'm going to turn it over next to Natalia for the student report. Natalia, welcome. Um, for CPAC's update, Middleborough Special Education Parent Advisory Council, CPAC, is inviting our students to rock their socks for World Down Syndrome Awareness Day on Friday, March 20th. Students are encouraged to wear crazy socks and bring a dollar donation. Friday, March 27th, at Heart and Art downtown, we will be hosting a free public viewing of the groundbreaking documentary, Intelligent Lives. This film transforms the label of intellectual disability from a life sentence of isolation into a life of possibility for the most systematical segregated people in America. Thursday, April 2nd, donate a dollar and go blue to raise awareness. All funds raised will directly benefit families with special needs in our community. Lastly, the Kindergarten Special Someone Dance is Friday, April 3rd, from 5.30 to 7 p.m. at the Mech Gymnasium. Tickets are sold at specialsomewondance.mcpac.org. For the Mech's updates for past events, um, beginning on Monday, March 2nd, the Mech School successfully hosted a um, week celebrating Dr. Seuss. Each day was themed based on one of Dr. Seuss's books. Mrs. Latender and MAC teachers would like to thank all of the guest readers for taking their time out of their busy day to share their love of reading with the students. MAC students are doing an amazing job in writer's workshop. Their development of reading and writing is amazing to see as they are writing complete sentences and sounding out words. MAC students are very excited to share their published books. February's word of the month was thoughtful and Fine Dining Friday took place on March 6th with Mrs. Latender. Just yesterday, students enjoyed listening to African, Cape Verdean, and Caribbean folk tales, along with original stories from in the internationally acclaimed storyteller for MKG for upcoming events. On March 20th, a movie night is being hosted at the MKG for third and fourth graders. For HBB for past events, the HBB just completed their first ever readathon, and it was their biggest fundraiser ever, raising almost $30,000. The readathon took place over weeks, and students sought to pledge to encourage them, re them to read. Students earned tons of prizes for minutes for the minutes they read, and money raised, and the money that they raised will be going towards enrichment activities, field trips, and Husky Haven, and much more. For upcoming events, beginning on March 16th, HBB Spirit Week next will be next week, and students will be encouraged to dress according to the following themes. Monday, Comfy Cozy Day. Tuesday, St. Patrick's Day. Wednesday, Wacky Wednesday. Thursday, Time Machine Thursday, which you will dress like um, what you want to be in the future. And Friday, Rock Your Socks. The annual Spaghetti Supper will be hosted on March 27th. For the Nichols Middle School for past events, yesterday, March 11th, NMS was successful in hosting their 65th annual STEM fair. Students placing in the four categor categories, including the illustrative category, controlled experiment open category, engineering and design category, and the plant-based category. For MHS for past events, from March 4th to 6th, a delegation of students from MHS Student Council attended the MASC State Conference where Middleborough was named a five-star council for the 2019-2020 school year and awarded the Gold Council of Excellence for the 12th straight year. These students not only participated in the leadership conference, but also in the Special Olympics Polar Plunge. For upcoming events, the music program is proud to present their annual Pops concert on Friday, March 13th at 7 p.m. in the MHS Auditorium. Tickets will be $5. On March 20th, students are encouraged to pay $1 to rock their socks as they raise money for World Down Syndrome Day. Thank you. 
Thanks, Natalia. Any um, questions for Natalia? Thank you. Any member of the school committee wishes to bring anything up at this time? Mr. Rowe. Um, thank you. Through you, Mr. Chair. I actually have two things, and I was thinking of tabling it until we got through these other items, but I thought these were big enough to let everyone know about this. Um, for those that know, I teach at Rockland High School, which is a rival basketball team. Um, the girls' basketball captain came running into my room to tell me how amazing the Middleborough girls' basketball team was as they sat behind them in a tournament game and cheered them on. And it was awesome to see how much she wanted me to pass on her appreciation that they came out to do that to them and support them and show some social league pride. So that was really amazing to have a captain come in out of her way to tell me that. Um, the second thing was I was fortunate enough to attend the Massachusetts Association Student Council Conference. And not only did the Middleborough kids prove, like I'd started doing student council in 2004, that's a big reason I moved here, was meeting those kids at student council at that annual conference. Um, but also the, the Middleborough Educational Television get a standing ovation from over a thousand students for the work that they did. And we see their work here every other week and to see them what they pull off in that week is absolutely amazing. So I'm very proud of all the Middleborough girls basketball. I'm very proud of all the kids in student council and MET. And I'm just really proud to be of this town and see it out Side this town as well. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> Any other comments? Well, I'm seeing none. Mr. Catino, I'll move on to you before we get started with the superintendent's report. Welcome, Mr. Catino. This is like a really big crowd. I know. We're very excited. I haven't seen this, I don't think, ever. I have to school. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I don't think I have. Um, so I just want a uh, couple, one additional thing off that our student rep does a really great job of reporting things that are going on. Um, and I don't know if you're aware, but we have um, members on our executive board that go to the parent-teacher um, meetings and I, I get information from them about the stuff that was going on. And the, um, I, when I heard the numbers for the, um, for the fundraising effort at the Brooklyn with the readathon, um, I just want to kind of give people an idea of what the kids at that school ended up having to do, because she talked about individual kids getting prizes and the money they raised, but they read for a combined 167,000 minutes. That's the equivalent of 116 straight days. That's crazy. That is, a, that is like a ton of reading, and that's just like, I think they all just need to give, you know, themselves a hand because that's, that's what we need to be doing, and that's what we need to celebrate in our schools is that kind of effort to, to put forward. And that's, but it was just, a, I was looking at the numbers, and it's like, this is crazy. That was a ton. And it was, it was a great fundraiser for them, and hopefully they can have similar success in the future with that same sort of a thing. Um, and that was, that was just what I wanted to bring up today. Thank you very much, Mr. Kinner. Anybody have any questions? Um, we had we had some uh, teacher conferences this past week. And uh, yes, we did. How'd they go? Um, I had a pretty full schedule. As a matter of fact, I, I was every five every every half hour the teachers get a five minute break. I filled in all of my five minute breaks, and I still didn't have enough slots for all the teachers that wanted to come to see me. Um, I don't know about the rest of the teachers, but I've got a lot of freshmen, and it's honors honors geometry, so get to see a lot of them, a lot of parents during that time frame. Um, so for me, it was busy. I like them busier than not. Sitting, standing around there, just waiting and twiddling my thumbs, that's no fun. So, but uh, they went well for me. I think, you know, for some other teachers, they went pretty well. But the March ones are usually pretty good. The October, I think the way we did the format this year worked out better. I don't know about the numbers for the, um, the eighth grade open house that they had, um, but where we put the two days together in October and had the one day here, I think that they were much better attended this year. And, and getting that flexibility into the contract where the teachers can help guide how they're going to use those days, I think that that was a good idea. So, Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Katina. Thank you. Um, we're going to move on to the superintendent's report. And can you talk a little about today? <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair, and members of the committee and members of the audience. Uh, today was, uh, was a different sort of day as this coronavirus sort of issue develops in our community and, and within our state and our nation and our world. Uh, it gets closer and closer with every day, as we know. Uh, today we had a couple of reports that came to us 
through uh, the Reeds Collaborative being one. There was a student there that may or may not have had some contact with Utah jazz players. Uh, he attends the Reeds Academy. He lives in Carver and uh, was playing at a halftime game and may or may not have high-fived a couple of the Utah jazz folks that, that did uh, contract the coronavirus. Uh, so out of an abundance of caution, I got a call from Teresa Craig, who's the executive director. Uh, this child had no contact with Middleborough students per se, but did cross the border into Middleborough and she called me as a courtesy. Um, we had another student who was reported to me that was symptomatic uh, and had flu-like symptoms and is at home. The child is a homeschooled child, um, but did participate in the BorrowBot program. Uh, Mr. Oakley, who's a member of this committee, runs that borrow bot along with Dr. Melanie Gates. Uh, he has contacted or at least attempted to contact all of the parents involved. Um, and again, out of an abundance of caution, I have made the decision that for tomorrow, uh, and I know a lot of school systems are doing this, uh, we're going to close the school tomorrow for a deep clean of the school system on both Friday and Saturday uh, of this week and reopen on Monday, scheduled to reopen on Monday unless something further happens with the governor or with the commissioner of education in terms of a longer clause or longer pause in terms of the school year. Uh, we have had school systems. I know folks probably are tuned in to social media and the news and uh, there are school systems like Everett that have canceled until April vacation. Uh, there are also schools that have canceled for one or two weeks at a time. Uh, Natick was one week and possibly two weeks and some other communities that have had coronavirus in their towns. We have no confirmation of any coronavirus in our town uh, and as such we're going to stick with this, this deep cleaning and, and continue, continue to, to vigilantly uh, sanitize our educational spaces uh, and try to mitigate uh, the approach of this coronavirus which is, is is destined uh, to affect our community in some way at some point, and today was basically the beginning as the closest it's come. So school will be closed tomorrow. I did send out a, a note to folks, uh, an email to every email address that we have, uh, and a phone call like a school cancellation to every, uh, every parent, every, everyone who was on that list. So hopefully the word got out at 5 o'clock today. That's when the word started to go out, and uh, people received that. Uh, unfortunately, that resulted in the, the postponement. I used the word cancellation, and I, I should have used the word postponement. Um, the POPs concert is postponed uh, indefinitely until such time as we can reassemble that crew and things clear up, hopefully. The uh, twirling that was supposed to occur on Sunday, that was a, a regional meet, and, and that was canceled, and there was a, an advanced placement uh, meeting, a session on Saturday morning where 300 students from all different schools were coming in. Uh, and we decided that it was not in the best interest of our Middleborough kids uh, to hold that. So those three were affected this weekend. I also spoke to Derek Thompson. He's going to speak with HBB about their uh, upcoming spaghetti supper, which is very important to them, and possibly postponing that. Um, the uh, special someone screening at the uh, dance at the MEC is another uh, social gathering that may need to be postponed because the governor and uh, everyone else is, is basically telling us that it's, it's best to stay away from these large group gatherings. Um, how this affects things down the road, I don't know. We hopefully will have the Pops concert. Very, it's very important. I know the, the folks in band, orchestra, and chorus have been working for three months, uh, rehearsing and practicing for that very special evening. I remember being in the Pops concert myself as a young person. Um, but in the case of, of the current world and the, the current community we're in, in terms of the coronavirus, you know, I felt it in the best interest of the school system to postpone uh, those three events this, this weekend and to conduct this deep cleaning. Um, myself, the chair, uh, met with uh, Mr. Hutchinson, James Hutchinson, our facilities director, at length today, going over a detailed plan for cleaning and uh, with our expectations and, and his, his expectations are consistent with ours. So uh, that's the current status of the situation. Uh, we don't know how it's going to evolve down the road. Uh, like I said, there are school systems that are closing for one week and, and two weeks. Uh, the governor has advised certain things, but the commissioner has said you, you, know, you go your, your 185 days, if you will, so you get to the end of that calendar, uh, and then nothing else would count against us, um, but we really want to get and maximize our school year, certainly 
with as many school days as we possibly can. We're not sure what will happen with MCAS. I was at a luncheon with a number of superintendents yesterday at the uh, Upper Cape Vocational School with the Commissioner of Education, and he said uh, a lot of these things continue to be local decisions, but at some point he may need to step in at the direction of the governor and uh, make decisions statewide. So that's how it's left right now. Uh, again, local decisions, uh, but the advisory from the governor and the commissioner uh, is to adhere to their suggestions with regard to guidelines that they've developed. So that's where we're at right now, and I would certainly invite any public comment for anyone that wanted to come down and speak to this, but uh, it's a decision made in the best interest of our students and our staff and in the best interest of our school system and our town. So um, and I'll continue to do those, uh, make decisions based on that. Questions about that or comments? Sure. Please. I completely support what you've done. I think we can all understand it's not an easy decision. And uh, when I heard heard it today, I got the call like everyone else. And uh, I appreciate it's not an easy decision to make, but I believe it to be the proper one. Because um, I, I had talked to Mr. Hutchinson yesterday at a meeting. And over and above everything else, they had already been doing additional um, brought in some additional staffing. We brought in some necessary. additional. We brought in some additional substitute custodians in the evening to continue to, uh, yeah, not just spot clean but deep clean. Right. So we've been doing it all along. It's just now we've we really got to go through and just hit it hard. Yep. And we're looking for additional substitute custodians if there's anyone out there who would like to uh, apply for that and meet with Mr. Hutchinson because we have some some uh, sanitizers coming in that are going to be go through a rotation coming up as soon. Hopefully we'll receive them tomorrow. They're electrostatic machines um, that are that cover everywhere, so that we can hit all of our one-on-one -on -one computer tablets and, and without in, in injuring or dangering them. Um, and so it's one of those situations where we'll continue to uh, be vigilant and get the latest uh, equipment in here that we possibly can to uh, sanitize our our spaces. School still is important, uh, still vital. Uh, they're they're not taking away the MCAS. <laughs> they're not taking away any of those the, any of those tests. They're not excusing anyone from anything at this point. Um, so we need to try to to maximize our school year. It's important for parents too because uh, tomorrow I I probably just sent uh, half our families, if not more, uh, into sort of uh, panic mode, especially if they have younger ones, in terms of who's going to cover and who's who has to take a day off or where the children are going to go uh, and that's a difficult thing to do especially when it's mid to late march and you're 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 getting to the point where you're thinking snow days are all done and maybe those plans are set uh, but that's where we're at unfortunately so and and certainly more to come and i'll try to uh, we're trying to uh, find uh, a, a place weekly that we can communicate trying to figure out a day whether it's wednesday or thursday that we can send out an update uh, and we'll continue to post on our website also any other questions? Great. Um, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, so the MCAS one, that is very interesting because if you look at a lot the number of communities that you mentioned, they're canceling school and those students will be missing MCAS. So I'm very interested to see how the state is going to react if half the state is taking MCAS because a lot of people in this audience probably have taken that MCAS where it's like fill out this date on this time and they want the MCAS done at the same time everywhere across the state. So it's exactly. very interesting to hear how those updates will go. Um, also with the MCAS scores, I was happy to hear the state did think ahead and started to excuse absences um, if students miss after, I believe, March 2nd. Is that correct? Beyond March 2nd. Beyond uh, March 2nd. Yeah. There's, there's a formula for absenteeism. Mm -hmm. It's called chronic absenteeism. And if a student meets a certain sort of quota with regard to dates missed, it, it subtracted from the school scores. So when the school report comes out for that school, you lose important points that bring you to a point where you're uh, your, your scores come out in your school and it's a reflection of your school chronic absenteeism so anything beyond March 2nd is not going to be counted against that chronic absenteeism okay. at this point and that's I thought that was a good move by the state to kind of do that um, also um, with staff and students that possibly could be more at risk for this virus is there a policy for those students or staff this would, that would be an individual situation, individual parents uh, addressing principals and, and faculty addressing me in terms of their concerns. Uh, you know, we know we've identified a group of folks. We don't have a lot of teachers over 60, uh, but we do have folks that have ailments that make them more susceptible um, to coronavirus has been outlined by the CDC, et cetera. Uh, so that would, be, that would be on an individual basis, but I would certainly consider uh, any faculty member that had concerns for their own health. Um, 
or parents with concerns for their children's health. All right. Thank you, sir. Yep. Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, if, if possible, it would be nice if we did have an update, say Sunday night, posted, even if the, it's nothing has changed, just so that we can say nothing has changed. That way there we know that even if, even if nothing's changed, we'll know Sunday night, everything yep. Monday morning we're going to have school. I wouldn't send an all call, but at least post it, yep. um, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, I can certainly do that. And that way there, it's where people have, if they want to go and look, they can look. And Well, if we send it out on the disk, I could, I could send an email to everyone. That's, right. that's a short yeah. email that we could certainly blast out to, to every parent on that list yeah. uh, and get word out to them, excuse me, yeah. um, about Monday. My my belief right now is that we'll have school on Monday, uh, but we have to see what happens. Um, the student that's homeschooled on Highland that had some contact with the, the folks in BorrowBot um, we're looking to find uh, some type of a finding from a doctor that says negative or positive. Um, certainly if it's negative, it changes things, and obviously if it's positive, it changes things. Uh, so that we, if it's positive, we'd certainly be looking at some self-quarantine for some folks and um, students that had contact with this student. Uh, so we'll hopefully get a doctor's note or some input. They're technically not one of our students. Uh, so we're reaching out, and the, the family has been very cooperative. It's, it's not a question of that. Uh, it's just a matter of finding that, hopefully, that negative test result. So could take a deep breath and, and uh, move on from that. Uh, but again, it's that big question mark that looms with regard to the status of this young person. I, you know, I hope and pray for this young person that the person remains healthy. Uh, mom had been sick a couple weeks ago. Younger siblings had been sick a couple weeks ago with something that might be going through the house. So we're sort of not hoping that that's what it is but hope it gets better tomorrow but if that's it then it's probably the flu slash cold uh, and but I, I'm not a doctor so and we leave that up to the medical professionals thank you other questions okay um, I, I do want to make mention because mr. Oakley asked me to pass this along so mr. Oakley who's a member of the school committee is not here tonight and he wanted to explain why and asked me to read this and so I will out of an abundance of caution and because of potential contact with high-risk population like older folks and those with heart-lung conditions or already depressed immune systems at the meeting, I am holding myself out of tonight's school committee meeting because of, an ex because of exposure I believe I had to an as-yet unconfirmed person exhibiting some corona-like symptoms. So he wanted people to know that and that's why he's not here. So with that, I, I, I want to talk a little about, although it's on the superintendent's report, I put it there, which is about out-of-state field trips. Um, so I'm going to explain how we'll handle this uh, so people understand, because I'm guessing a lot of you haven't been here before. So for those who have, welcome again. For those who haven't, welcome for the first time. Um, so what's going to happen is we're going to have a, a brief discussion. We're going to split them up into the three field trips of concern, which is as follows. The band trip would go first, followed by the senior trip, and followed by the international trip to Greece. Um, we'll talk about those individually, so I'm gonna have those conversations one-on-one. -on -one. Part of the reason is because individual members of the school committee will have to recuse themselves from pieces of those discussion, and that's why. Um, when we have that discussion, uh, I'm gonna make a brief presentation to the school committee uh, based on information I've had and people have asked me about. Um, and then I'm going to open up to them to questions, and then I'll open it up to comments or questions from all of you. Um, I would ask that you come down to the table and make your comments and questions at the microphone. That way it's recorded and the people who this is being recorded for can hear what you're saying. And also it makes it easier for our secretary to hear. Um, just so people understand why we're doing this. Um, first and foremost um, is this for me. The school committee decides and has to approve each and every out-of-state field trip. And that, to put, that doesn't matter if it goes to Roger Williams Zoo or if it goes to Japan. Um, so it's our responsibility with those field trips. The other piece that I didn't like, and as I'm sure you all know, other districts are canceling field trips um, throughout the region. The vast majority of those districts have either had the superintendent cancel it or the, the school committee has canceled it with really no public input. 
Um, I don't think that's fair. Um, you're the ones who are involved in those trips, so we want to make it an opportunity for you to speak. I will make sure that everybody who wants to can come down and have a conversation with us and, and say their comment and ask their questions if they want to. Um, we may not have some answers to your questions, but we'll try to get them. And between Mr. Pitsley and Mr. Brannigan and the superintendent, I'll try to get back to you with answers. Does that make sense to everybody? So if, again, if you want to come down at any point, I'll ask you when to come down, if you just come to the microphones and talk. So before I begin, we are going to discuss, um, start with the band trip. Does any member wish to say anything before I decide that discussion? Mr. Stevens. Mr. Chair. <clears throat> so I have paid for my daughter's trip to, the, to Canada, and I had Mr. Young talk to the State Ethics Commission, and because of my financial interest in the matter, I have to recuse myself from this, which means I can't be at the table. I have the right to come down and speak as a citizen, but I can't be up here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stevens. So first and foremost, I want to thank a couple of people. I want to thank Mr. Pitsley. Uh, Mr. Pitsley and I have been in contact. Um, so what normally happens with the agendas for the school committee is the superintendent, myself, the business manager, and the superintendent's secretary sit down on a Thursday and establish the agenda. Uh, we talked about the need given at that time the governor's decision um, in which the governor canceled, asked schools to cancel all international travel. Um, in case you're wondering why the governor didn't cancel all international travel, it's an interesting piece. Um, had a conversation with people from the governor's office. Um, they believe constitutionally that school committees are structured differently in the Constitution than the governor's office. And it makes it very clear that the governor doesn't have powers over school committees except in certain instances. For example, even though the governor declares a state of emergency in a snowstorm, the governor can't cancel school in the district. That can only happen as we've allowed the superintendent to do that. So that's why the governor did what he did and made it that he requested school committees do that. So after we found that out, we put it on our agenda. I immediately contacted Mr. Brannigan and Mr. Pitsley to let them know it was on the agenda. I asked both of them to invite um, whoever wanted to attend and let parents and students and faculty and everybody know about what was going to happen so we could have that conversation. In the meantime, the governor declared a state of emergency the other day. And in that state of emergency, he asked school committees to end all out of state travel. So that was the fundamental change from international travel to out of state travel. The second piece is, is Mr. Pitsley provided me with a variety of information that I passed along to all the school committee members as he sent it to me. Um, him and I have been back and forth with question and answers with each other and tried to sort of answer those pieces. Um, in the meantime, again, I'd like to thank the superintendent. He did a lot of work for me with questions, especially around our insurance carrier. Our insurance carrier came uh, back to us and said they'd review our policies and see what uh, was available to us. Uh, the insurance carrier made it clear that under the terms of the insurance policy that we have, um, it has nothing to do with uh, reclaiming travel. Um, the other piece is he made it very clear that the um, district puts itself in danger by not canceling the trip because everybody has requested that they cancel the trip. The second piece is I talked to our attorney um, who had a conversation with her and again she said a similar piece to us which was that if the district goes against the advice of the state and local board of health um, then the district risks itself and so I said okay um, the second piece that she asked me to do which I did was contact our board of health so I had a conversation with the head of our board of health who is Mr. Robert Buecher Mr. Buecher and I had a lengthy conversation um, yesterday primarily about was there any additional information that the town had given or our pieces the town wanted out other than what the state had given. Um, and he said no. Um, they were complying with exactly what the state was. And again, he would recommend the same piece. Um, so, and again, I want to thank Paul too, because again, Paul's been very helpful with all information that I've had and needed. Um, and that, so that brings us to tonight. 
Um, I had had conversations at the state level that, again, about why the governor chose what he did. The, the governor's office explained it to me, as did a couple of legislators. Um, and it brings us here tonight. Does anyone have any questions for me about that from the committee? Does that make sense or anything that they thought of? Brian, am I missing anything that we sort of outlined? That was, that was a good summary. Thank you. So tonight we're going to decide on what happens. Um, and so I'm going to open it up to all of you. So, sure. yes. Before you open it up, I have a couple questions. Sure. First question that I had is we have a meeting in two weeks. Yeah. Is there any way, I don't want, I'm not trying to put procrastinate, but to look and see what's going to happen I, I, in two weeks. Um, would there be a different answer in two weeks that we uh, maybe cancel or not cancel? And there may be other pieces to that that I, I'm unaware of. That's why I'm asking that question with regards to recuperation of funds or something like that. So given the time frame, I asked a variety, given the time frames are a little different. The band trip is very early in the month. The, um, Other one. the senior trip really goes to the end of the month. I think it starts the 18th, somewhere around there, if I'm correct. And the Greece trip actually goes when school's out um, at the end of June into, into July. Um, having conversations with the state, I do not believe a decision will change in time for the band trip. So I think we need to make a decision about the band trip now. Um, I also don't know that a decision will be changed given the governor's outline of time that he was hoping for, um, for the senior trip. But we have a meeting in two weeks, so I think it to some extent makes a sense to, um, to wait the two more weeks for the senior trip. The problem with the band trip, as I see, is for some of the insurance pieces and things like that, there's a cancellation piece that people have to start right away. Uh, they have to start within 70, please, Ms. Pistol, they have to start within 72 hours of a cancellation, if I'm correct. Welcome, Mr. Pitsley. And thank you again for the yeah. lengthy back and forth you and I have had over the week. I told Mr. Young uh, in one of our emails that I appreciate <clears throat> at least the conversation I have, I was at Allstate last week with many of the music educators in Massachusetts, and this was the conversation every single school is having. And so most of my colleagues from other districts that I talked to had zero input with their school committees or superintendents. They were just told it was canceled, and I think that's, uh, I think that's a shame. So I at least appreciate the opportunity to have communicated with, with Mr. Young. Um, and to have some discussion about that before those decisions are made. So I think that's an example Middleborough can set for other districts that uh, that's a good thing. Um, so a couple, uh, I don't know if you want to address the assurance piece. So I sent this to the school committee. Um, at this point, our trip is non-refundable. Within 30 days of canceling the trip uh, through Suburban Tours, who is our travel, agency, uh, through them, it's non-refundable. So regardless of whether that decision was made any time in those 30 days, it doesn't matter. Uh, then it comes down to the insurance piece to that. And so we have some students who have the insurance that purchased it, it's optional. So some chose to purchase it and some did not. Um, at this point, we are, there are two basic plans. The basic plan, which is my understanding that the insurance company will not honor a cancellation based on coronavirus for the basic insurance plan. Their website, they're in their business not to pay out. So um, they've been clear about that. There is some confusion about why, whether it's canceled by the school committee or by the state in some higher level of emergency. Certainly that would be better for insurance for everybody if that happened. That's not what the governor is able to do or wanting to do, but that's the reporting I'm getting from some students who've tried to get insurance in other places. Um, the cancel for any reason coverage, which is the highest level of coverage you could purchase, allows a student to cancel for any reason. Uh, they have to contact the company no later than 48 hours before we leave departure time. 
So they have 48 hours. Um, they have to cancel by that mark. And then they get up to 75% of the cost back for the trip. So at this point, just to, and obviously the committee needs to do what it needs to do. There's no benefit in terms of financial loss for canceling tonight. Um, if there are other factors, there are other factors. But financially, waiting two weeks wouldn't make any difference at all. I contacted the uh, travel agent. She said March 27th would be the date that she would want to know by just to make sure that families have that window to contact. And so that's the information I think I passed along at some point. Um, you know, canceling the trip obviously has the opportunity loss uh, for, for students. Um, I think you can tell that these are a significant event for students. Uh, it's a really important event for students. I understand the reasons why we might need to cancel, but it is important to them. There's a, there's a large financial loss canceling this trip. Um, I sent the school committee some information about that, but it, we have 29 families who will lose the entire amount uh, based on how this gets canceled. That includes four families who have more than one student um, who are going on the trip. So that's a significant loss for those families. Um, and so those are some of the insurance pieces as we see them now. And we went back and forth with the insurance company trying to get more kids covered. I contact the, t contacted them February 28th before all this hit the news as much, you know, in terms of all of this, this window. And she said, all right, let's try to get them all covered. And so we put out information trying to get kids covered. The insurance company came back and said, well, no, 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 this is really spiraling now. And so we're going to honor the original terms. So there's some confusion there trying to get kids covered. Uh, some kids were able to get private insurance through AAA or some other places. Uh, and hopefully some more were able to take advantage of that. But I was told tonight by some that it depends on how it's canceled, on whether they get insurance back um, at all. And so I don't know the answers to those questions. Okay. Let me ask you this question. Then. Yeah. Um, would you prefer we wait the two? If I'm asking. I wouldn't presume to tell all no, of no, you I'm what asking. to do. I think that if there is no legal problem or anything else on your plate other than just leaving it the only person it makes more work for to wait the two weeks is me no that's that's why because what i have to, to do is you, that's what yeah, i figured i wait two weeks and, and that I'm means asking. i have to plan as though we're going yeah because so, i can't wait um i'm prepared to do that i think it's important enough to these students and these families i think they're here tonight to tell you that i'm, yep. I'm presuming um my personal take is if we wait the two weeks, if it doesn't make a difference in any legal way or it's going to harm the district, why not wait? And uh, I'll do my work on my end, understanding that the likelihood is probably not great based on what the governor is saying. Right. But it gives the chance, who knows, maybe with the state shutting a lot of things down for two weeks, you know, colleges are coming back, many of them within two weeks, uh, in the two week time frame. Maybe this thing goes away. Doubtful. But Mr. Chair, yeah. with regards to that's why I asked this question is if it doesn't make a difference, the difference could be either the government, the federal government shuts down the Canadian border. I mean, Justin yeah. Trudeau is self quarantining himself right now because yeah. he may have actually contacted somebody. But the, the piece would be is if it may make a difference for insurance purposes, if the federal government shuts things down versus us making this random not random, but this appearance of a random choice to turn it down. And honestly, I was thinking, I've been thinking about that since I've seen some of these emails yeah. that that's why I was waiting. Can we wait till, <clears throat> and I, I hate doing that to people, but can we wait that two weeks? And honestly, uh, that, that was my biggest, biggest piece is understanding the writings on the wall for this trip. Right. I think it's obvious. I think people have known that, but how can we do the best we can for our families who are going to lose their funds? Yeah, and I mean, it, it's it's a tough situation for them. It also hurts the music department's ability for future trips because people get hesitant. They'll learn from this year, and hopefully, you know, that's a positive thing that we learn from things going forward. But at the same time, you might have some families that say, "I'm not worth going to take that risk next year, or I just can't afford to because I lost all that money last year." So if we can wait two weeks and recover any money or give at least that chance, to me, that's, that's a positive thing to do, as long as that's not going to hurt the district. Um, 
The other piece that I want to make everyone aware of too, and I should have mentioned this as part of it, um, one of the good things was the state uh, Massachusetts Association of Superintendents um, came together and they put out a letter. Essentially, um, the letter goes to a wide variety of people, as you can imagine, but it's, it's the people who do the tours uh, primarily right now. And the conversation is, as everyone knows, certain tour companies get used by districts more than other tour companies. Um, and so it essentially lays out if they're not willing to um, help the families if programs, if things have to be canceled, then these districts will be looking for other tour companies, not necessarily the same they've used over and over again. And it sort of puts them on notice to say, we're going to do this as a group um, and say, if you, if you don't handle our families correctly, then we have no choice but next time to look. So I did want to point out that because I think that's important. And I think a lot of superintendents came together to put it up as a as piece. Yeah. And so that was good. I think that's a, a positive thing. I've talked to our company a lot. Suburban Tours has been fantastic for us. Um, they everything we've needed they make our trips seamless we come back here every year and ask to go again to somewhere else and we come back with the experience these kids have and we have very very minimal trips problems and suburban is a huge piece to that um, I've spoken with them they're they're looking at what they can uh, they're not based in Massachusetts so it's they're out of Rhode Island um, but they are are they do a ton of student travel but on their end too, it's difficult because everybody's canceling and it makes it very difficult on their end um, when they're a primarily a student travel group. And so I understand some of their perspective they're taking. I also understand that you know anything we can do to create good business with our families and our schools is a good thing. So I've been in a lot of conversations with them, but I'm bringing the information I have to you as it is now. Right. Mr. Chair, through you, uh, Mr. Pitsley, have they offered, uh, like some of the other companies have, any type of a voucher? As for example, this $900 that folks are paying on this trip, have they offered any type of a voucher saying, all right, here's a $900 voucher to use as a family to go to Washington, D.C., or as a family to go to Quebec when this right. thing clears up, just in case <coughs> this band trip doesn't go through? So I know EF Tours is at the point where they're talking about vouchers, mm -hmm. half 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 the cash back but a, vo a full voucher for travel and and but i'm just wondering about suburban tours and if they've taken a position on that so far they haven't they haven't reached out and asked about that um, our conversations have very much been monitoring the situation and it has escalated so quickly that it's really changed really fast and so in my position as as a teacher and director of the tour, it's very difficult to try to have those constant conversations with them. Right now, it's been mostly like, how do we figure out what's going on? Can we change our tour in any way? I mean, we're going to a place, we're, we're not going out in public per se, like we're not going to a big event somewhere. So we've been talking about those kinds of things. That's something I can discuss with them going forward. Um, but right now, it's just kind of been a rush to the finish line to figure out what's going on. And, and that's certainly, if we wait two weeks, that's something I can certainly go back and say our committee is likely going to cancel but we're going to look at the two weeks and see if anything changes and what can you do for us um, refundable costs vouchers or, or whatnot thank you anyone have questions for mr. Pitsley? great um, this is more of a question for the district than for mr. Pitsley but um, through you mr. chair uh, mr. Pitsley brought up the fact that there's kind of this loophole in the insurance which you brought up earlier like they only give the money back if the state cancels the trip but the state says they can't legally cancel it it's got to be the school committee so that's almost a loophole if there was some way to get an attorney to pursue why that loophole is there would that be the responsibility of the band of the school district of the superintendents i, I don't know to be honest with you i've had a conversation with a few legislators at the state house to, for this very conversation which is about the governor's interpretation which i think is a reasonable one at, at, that they present and the same token is why they need the schools to do what they need to do and they're only recommending as opposed to saying i i really don't feel from a state perspective from what i've heard that the state is going to say no because um, they don't view it again at the local level as something they have control over um, the pieces that they believe they have control over are higher ed um, so the umass system obviously they've made determinations based on that those type of things but that's that's where they're at right now as far as if a 
legislator makes some sort of change, I don't know. I've had conversations briefly about sort of this, the whole pieces that we're involved in, as have other superintendents and other school committee members in their districts, so they are hearing it. And MASS sent the letter out to all the legislators too, having that same conversation. And Mr. Chair, I think the, the sort of the legal maxim they use is, a, is called a travel disruption. And, and that's defined in many different ways. Uh, and I know that's come up with Mr. Brannigan in the Florida tour, uh, that if the governor says certain things, sometimes that's defined as a travel disruption. I think that's what they're looking for. Um, I think they're depending on more of a, a, a sort of a, either the presidential or governmental um, sort of interruption saying, we're canceling travel out of state, out of any state, uh, you know, closing down the country, if you will. Mr. Giovanni mentioned that earlier. And that would certainly constitute a, a travel disruption. Can I ask a question? Sure. Um, can we, or I'm sure we have, but can we ask our legislators to advocate for that with the federal government to say, I don't know if they have the authority to say student travel in the best interest of everybody is canceled across the border for regions. I mean, these are, it's the question could come back and the answer is no. I'm not, a, I don't know anything about the, <laughs> the legal aspect of it, but at least our legislators could be active in lobbying. I can have for the conversation that. with the Congressman's office tomorrow morning. That's, and so you and I can get together after sure. we had that. That's not an issue with that. And through you, Mr. Chair, I, I have a phone conference uh, this, tomorrow morning with the commissioner uh, and I think the governor's gonna be on the line along with all the other superintendents from Massachusetts, the Department of Public Health, and as this situation evolves, it obviously as the situation is getting worse, not better, uh, and I think that there may be more directive from the Massachusetts government on what to do, and uh, hopefully there's something that definitive that comes out, so. Definitive will be great. Yeah. <laughs> At this point. Yeah. For everybody. I mean, I'm asking you to wait, but also to have answers to, I, I, I don't know the ins and outs of a lot of these things, so you've been great to get us that information as, no as it comes up. I'll have a conversation tomorrow. I can do okay. that. I can start that tonight, and we'll set that up. Other questions? Just for okay. timeline purposes, so to the 27th is when you would have to cancel by, and our next yeah. meeting is the 26th, 26th. right? Right. So, so that, that kind down. of works out perfect to kind of wait and kind <coughs> of see how everything plays out. That was my thinking when I looked at the, the timeline when talking with the company. I mean. We're not out the money at this yeah. point. It's already gone. So let's see if we can recoup whatever we can. So, and uh, invite you all to the pops when it happens. That would be great. We've got our, our raffles on ice. Available? So what's that? Are there still tables available? <laughs> it's in the auditorium this year. Uh, so there, there are no tables. But the room's all set up if you want to go stop by and see it while they're cleaning it, because it's all set for tomorrow night. So uh, There's nothing in the raffle prizes that might spoil. No, except, yeah, I don't think so, no. Okay. We'll just hold them off and hopefully be able to reschedule. Mr. Chair. Yes. If for some reason we're unable to reschedule the Pops concert quick enough, I would love a simulcast of it at least. Yeah. I, I, I'm serious about that. I, I was talking about that because my, both my kids are in the band, and they said they were devastated about not, after all this work that they've done, um, to not be able to perform. I said, well, we got to do something if we can't. Hopefully, we'll be able to do something with with uh, the student um, program that can record it. Um, I've actually watched others before anyway over again because they're cool. So, and through you, Mr. Chair, I'd like to treat this as a snow day tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. So, Perfect. if it were a snow day, it'd be canceled too. So, yep. that's the idea: is to hopefully put this at a point in the year, maybe a little bit later in the year, that we can we can pull this off without yep. an issue. And if it comes down to simulcast. I'm sure Mr. Siciliano and Mr. Pelletier and the MET crew, uh, judging by the production company that they have and the job they did last week, could probably do a nice show. So, yeah. and it's just too bad the parents don't get to enjoy it in person if that's the case. But we'll, we'll make it happen one way or another. Too. We'll make it happen. Any questions for Mr. Pitsley? Thank you, Mr. Pitsley. I'll invite anybody else who wants to come down and talk that they are more than welcome to. Nobody? Again, we're talking the band trip. So what I would suggest to everybody is this. We will make a decision. Yeah, please come on down. I, if you could just state your name and your address for the record. Thank you. Is there, can you keep it 
simple was there of any uh, postponement of the trip versus you know the, the the loss of all the money just to put it off to a later date I'm gonna ask mr. Pitsley to come back and talk mm -hmm. about that because <laughs> because I know we've had this conversation about postponement so I'd rather have him say it there my doctor told me to lose weight so I'm gonna get the workout back and forth um, postponements are really difficult all right um, there are, there are financial ramifications to that. It would probably cost us more money on families to try to reschedule some of those things. We could try to mitigate that. The problem really becomes the district schedule. Uh, with, with testing, everything's so up in the air right now as it is, I can't count on anything before April break. When we come back from April break, uh, we, we intentionally don't schedule music trips on April break because of our seniors and that opportunity they have for Florida. I can't, in, in, good conscience ask my music kids to make that choice, which is why we schedule when we do. Once we get back from that, we are head on into full spring sports and tournament season, advanced placement testing, proms, senior activities. Uh, the only other option would be after graduation later in June, um, which is something some schools do now. It becomes a challenge in that um, uh, spring sports tournament schedules are usually in that time frame or winding down around then and, and we've had some competitive teams which is great around that time uh, it also becomes we have issues we have graduated seniors many of which who all these college orientations now are taking place very early on in June that becomes a problem um, and it, it becomes an interruption that way so it becomes very difficult to reschedule a trip of this magnitude um, of this size it's not out of the realm of possibility, but it's extremely difficult. And, and then even if it was, let's say it was be, supposed to be postponed, let's say we could postpone it and it worked, say early September, October, then we run into the problem with the senior class of, of how, it, how you work that out in those pieces. So it, then it becomes much more difficult. And you also have a new crop of students coming in, some of which, you know, part of the, as many of you guys know, part of the senior band trip is part of the band trip is to go all four years because Mr. Pritzley tries to do that loop where I think it's Washington it's Canada and then it's someplace else so New York City would be next year presumably and so it rotates around so people get opportunities that I understand the Quebec one is an opportunity to be at McGill and work with their music department as opposed to the other pieces which are festivals and opportunities for people to participate in those festivals and perform as a group, so. Yep. Yeah. Mr. Chair, Mr. Pitsley, when you talk to Suburban, could you ask them if there's any three or four day period, four day period uh, that's yep. available uh, in May or early May or yep. something like that, and, and maybe we can get an answer from them. Yep. Can I ask thank questions? You for question. yeah, no, thank you very much. Thank I know you. it's not that easy, but no, I understand. I appreciate we appreciate you coming. I'll just stay right here. Anyone else have any questions or comments? Welcome. Thank you. My name is Andrea Almodovar, and I live at 19 Montello. A um, couple questions, and I know they're probably super far-fetched, kind of along the lines of rescheduling. Is there a way to poll the kids to see what they have going on, and if there's chunks of time that they might be able to do a trip at a later date, so we can get a consensus? Um, and then also. Um, is there any thought being put into making insurance mandatory going forward for these trips for issues like this? Uh, two things. One, this is the first one is my assumption is if the opportunity comes up that we can reschedule, then the, Mr. Pitsley can do some sort of poll or, or, or piece it together what, what's best for kids. We have online ability for that, so that's pretty easy. As far as the mandatory, no, it hasn't been mandatory. Uh, it's been greatly encouraged each and every time, and I think for those who have sat through the presentation, not only is it greatly encouraged on our side, but it's greatly encouraged on the side of the tour. Um, having been through kids who've gone through the band trip and children who've gone through the senior trip, so I've seen all those pieces, and I know how they, they're sort of presented. So, um, But as far as, to be honest with you, Mr. Giovanoni had a conversation with me yesterday and said, we should think about mandating the insurance. And I said, okay, we can have that conversation at some point, but obviously 
it's too late now. <laughs> right. So, but I only asked because I know it was offered for the music trip, which we took advantage of, thank goodness. But I know for the senior trip, it wasn't even an option. Right. It's so a, that's it's a different right, setup. Right. 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 I was asking, and then the other question I have is, um, is there any condition? I mean, I know that you're looking to get people's input, so if you were to poll the parents and the students to see if they want the trip to, co to go on and pretty much everyone said yes, would you still consider that or you're making a decision based on fallback from, like, I, like Mr. Pitsley, I don't presume to know what you guys have on your end as far as liabilities and, and all that stuff. So yes, I mean, this, we take the input of parents and students um, and I can't emphasize that enough, but I say that, you know, I would say this for any elected official. Um, if you don't listen to the advice of your attorney and your insurance carrier, you put the town at a great risk. Um, and that would be a concern to me. Um, whether or not an overwhelming amount mitigates that concern, I don't have an answer for you. Um, you know, I came here tonight sort of open to listening to everybody and making a decision based on that. I, I can't emphasize enough from my perspective and I've said this to Mr. Pistley at least a thousand times in every email we've talked, I, I haven't made a decision um, because I really want people to be able to come in and input and have, and, and maybe people come up with ideas that I haven't thought of yet and ideas to look at it. That, as this person said over here, the idea of looking to reschedule, um, I think, I know Mr. Pistley and I have been focused on certain things, trying to mitigate one of the things that we've talked about, for example, is if the kids couldn't go internationally that time, was there an opportunity for them to, for example, go to Bridgewater and work with the uh, Bridgewater State's uh, music department or Stonehill or someplace else? Now, mind you, this was before colleges started closing for a long period right. of time. So we, you know, we were looking at those type of things. I wasn't necessarily looking at the piece about trying to reschedule and because I didn't know that was an option, but that's a good piece to bring up. So for me, it's about listening to people and, you know, I think people have good ideas. I, I always try to tell people that the reason we open these up to public discussions is I don't believe that the nine people who sit at this table have the answers to every question that we run into. And so we have to open to people who a lot of times are experts in what they do and can come in and have conversations with us. That makes sense. So I hope that's an answer. That no, it absolutely question. is. And I think everyone here appreciates you allowing us to have some input and some say and um, I, I know I speak for myself when I say I mean, it's a lot of money, but it's not so much the money, it's the opportunity the kids are missing that I think hurts the most for them and for us to have to see them not be able to take senior trips and all that stuff. It's their last year. So, But thank you, everyone, for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments or questions? Come on down. First of all, welcome. I just wanted to say a few words about like how the trips have affected me. Could and you just tell us who you are? <laughs> I'm Moss Korea of On Seven Maple Road. So sure. I'm senior drum major for the MHS band. And when I was first touring MHS in eighth grade, I was curious of what the music department had in store. I was lucky enough to get to tour get two tour guides who were heavily involved in the music department and had a lot to say about the opportunities that it offered. Even though I was hooked from the start, I, had I was further motivated when I found out about the annual, annual trips. Going into high school, I knew that I would be given new opportunities to make a name for myself. When the New York City trip rolled around, I didn't only step out of my comfort zone, I dove head first into a world outside of everything I was used to. I didn't have to worry about what others thought of me. I was surrounded by people who care about me, people who pick me up when I feel down and are always there to support me. Since then, I've been to Nashville and Washington, D.C. with the music department. With each trip, I learned a different lesson about myself and the people around me. The music trip is so much more than a vacation. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Without it, I wouldn't have broken out of my shell freshman year, and I wouldn't be able to make the lasting connections I've made with my peers. Canceling wouldn't only take the final trip away from the seniors, it would also keep the freshmen from taking risk and getting a taste of the real world. I wouldn't be the person I am today without that fateful New York trip, and I hope this year's freshmen get the same opportunity that I did. Thank you. 
we'll see. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Come on down. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm Brendan Lenahan. Um, I'd just like to say that I've had family in this town for years. My cousins were, went to this school and they went on trips. They told my sister who is in college now, she told me, and it's always kind of been like the story of how great the trips are. Like they change, change they don't change you, but they're, an experience that you don't usually get to go for. Um, my, fresh, my freshman year, we went to Nashville, which I had never left the East Coast for my entire life. <laughs> and to get the opportunity to go to Nashville and to see that was inspiring, to say the least, as a freshman who wasn't sure what he was gonna do for the rest of his career like high school career, like I thought I was just gonna cruise along in band or maybe not even finish band and sure enough, I ended up in choir. Um, but I, when I joined choir, I kept going back to those trips because I went to DC because of that Nashville trip, that first trip. Quite frankly, if I hadn't gone on the first trip, I wouldn't have gone on the second one and I wouldn't have signed up for this third one. It's a big deal. I'm not, I may not be a senior, this may not be my final trip, but I'm, I have so much social activity with the seniors that I've seen how it affects them. You will see a, quite a few not so dry eyes in the back there because people are scared. They, this experience has happened for three years now for most of them and it's their final hurrah to say the least. Now, I know the Pops concert was a decision that was rightfully so, but a lot of them worry just with that, and it put a lot of worry on tonight when we originally thought this decision was being made. So I kind of wanted to put my two cents in to say that a lot of these seniors are going through so much stress in this one week alone I'm so glad that you guys talked about pushing it back two weeks, but so many of these seniors are scholarships were this week, if you weren't aware. A lot of them have, <laughs> yes, oh yes. Extended, extended. Extended, but there are, there are students who, in, especially in our music program, who schools are requiring their auditions this week. Like, this is a important week for them and to have all this worry pl placed upon them as seniors of this final trip is has been overwhelming to say the least now if some of them want to speak for, on their own behalf that's up to them but i just wanted to say a few things thank you really thank you it. other people come on down Come on, Sue. Welcome, Sue. I'm Sue Lynch. I live at North Street. Um, so, as a parent, so I have two children that are, I'm one of those small groups, I guess, that have two children invested in this trip. and. Um, first of all, I really want to thank you guys for listening to us because honestly, it does mean a lot. And as a parent of two children that could potentially go, um, I had a long conversation with their father as well um, to be open about it. We happen to unfortunately be one of those families that didn't get insurance. So the trip itself was extremely difficult for us to afford. Add on the financial 
burdens that any parent of a senior has. It's, it's, this is my first rodeo with a senior, and I didn't realize how costly it can get to do a lot of the things that, that you want your child to have those opportunities for. So, so you pinch your pennies and you pull it together and you do what you can. Um, I think you know anybody would do the same. Um, that aside, clearly my children's health and well-being is worth a million more than that. So I'm not willing to take a risk or to put my finances before my children's health and welfare and well-being. So that, although the financial hurts, it does, they're dollars, it's paper. Um, it is the opportunity that I'm hearing the kids speak of. I had a great conversation with um, my children's father and together, you know, we both s sort of came to the same place, which I want to, you know, mention is that we both feel safe with our children going on this trip um, for a number of reasons. Some of the reasons that I feel safe, and I, and I guess I using that term is probably not the term I should say. My daughter went prom shopping to the Braintree Mall. I freaked out. And in my mind, I thought, all the germs that are at the Braintree Mall, the pandemic going on, that was more of a concern. The reason that this trip is less of a concern to me is because this is her fourth year, my oldest, and I have a sophomore. I have seen the way that Mr. Pitsley has run these trips. I have, my daughter has traveled to Europe with him. I know how he can be a bit of a nag with a passport, so I can only imagine how he's going to be with hygiene. So I have faith in him as, as, a, as a leader of the trip. I know the other chaperones that would be on that trip. Um, we're sending our children, or potentially considering sending our children from Middleborough High School on a private bus that's not open to the public to an area in our world that has less of the, the coronavirus than other places. We're not sending them to places that to me has a great concern. Could that change? Absolutely. It could also change in the state of Massachusetts, but I'm not gonna run to Rhode Island. The point that I wanna make is that I've made a decision along with their father that I don't want my children to live in fear. Could this be you know, dangerous for them? Absolutely. But every time my daughter gets into a car and goes off with her friends, even on a sunny day, I worry a bit. I do. It's a hard choice to make as a parent to not worry. Um, this is a very big worry, but I have made a very conscious decision that I am advocating for them to go on the trip because I don't feel as though the fear outweighs the benefit given the, the way that the trip is orchestrated at this point. Again, going back to the private bus, going to a place where there is less incidence of the virus, being together as a group, being mindful. These, these kids, as you guys have probably seen in this band and orchestra and, and music, are a very smart group of children. They're a very smart, intelligent group that know what to do. They know as parents, we're gonna worry like heck. So yep, there's gonna be a lot of cleaning products that are gonna be involved. Um, I guess I just felt like it was important to sort of share that, to give that parent's perspective. So I'm not really asking any questions, but I wanna be open and say as a parent, I understand that you have your risks and I understand there is a liability for you. Um, as a parent, I'm glad that you're giving us this opportunity. Um, I respect, in the end, your decision as I would respect the authority of anybody I you know, choose to, to see, you know, to vote on to a board, but um, I, I hope you'll take that into consideration. Thanks, Sue. So. Yep. Appreciate it. Other people want to make a comment or question? I was thinking a very similar piece, Mr. Chair, I was, I was thinking a very similar piece to that. 
as you'll be talking about Florida next, uh, I was going through the same thoughts with my senior. And um, my question was to myself is, would I sign an absolute waiver and say, I want, if he wants to go and he and I, and my wife and I were comfortable, my wife jokingly said to me, can we get away for a weekend? Because the flights are really cheap right now. And it wasn't a joke, she was actually serious. Um, but the, 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 uh, the pieces as a parent, um, I don't know what our liability would be if all the parents said, if this whole room said, our kids are still going, uh, we'll sign the waiver, let's go. I don't know, I don't know if that's even an, a possibility, but if it was, because um, I've always, you know, I've always been a little skeptical about travel outside the country. It's always been something I've been concerned with. And my, my concern specifically on this one is, is coming home. Um, with, and, I, and, I've, and I've thought of this is what happens if we're coming home or the border shuts down except for coming home. One student on the entire bus gets checked at the checkpoint coming in in Vermont and they're in Fort Drum for 14 days. That was one of my concerns. But if the parents want to do this, this is something that I was wondering if we could still allow it to happen. But it's just something that I think in the next two weeks we have to see where things are because it could go like this or it could go like this or be the same. And if Biogen didn't have a meeting, we probably wouldn't be as scared right now in Massachusetts. Sorry, I shouldn't say that. Take that back. Well, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name's Lauren Harrington. I live on 77 Maple Road. Um, I was just curious about the idea of just kind of planning in advance for like prevention of catching on to the virus or getting any exposure to any germs. I know um, Mr. Pitsley brought up to me the idea that we might be on along the way he's planning on having us like make stops specifically to like all get off the bus and wash our hands. Um, I know like there's a whole thing with masks and like that's kind of like an extreme I like especially since they're in such short um, supply, but I was just wondering if there's anything we could do to plan and prevent these things for all three trips, um, specifically the ones that are coming up really soon and in really like dense areas. Well, my assumption is, and Mr. Brannigan can correct me if I'm wrong, that if all, depending on what happened with all three trips, that whoever the advisor was for all three trips would be given information that they would go over with everybody as Mr. Pitsley has started to go over with people. And the same with the senior trip and the same with the, the next trip. And as I know, for example, we've had other trips over the past um, and other things have been brought up, especially by the EF tours. EF tours sort of puts out a list of things going on in the area to parents and everything like that. So my assumption would be that stuff would come for, through the school to the advisor who's going on the trip. So with the idea of like having these set plans, say in two weeks we come back with a set plan of like, we're gonna have like these situations where like we're canceling maybe this part of the trip so we don't have to worry about being around a large group of people and then we're organizing like set like hand washing situations, stuff like that. Um, would that help like encourage the idea of possibly going on the trip, do you think? So, so what we did, um, especially in regards to the uh, band trip, because when this all started out, it really had to do with the band trip because that was sort of the first one and that was the one that they had said no international tours. Um, so Mr. Pitsley gave me the itinerary of what the trip was gonna take place with. We sent it to all the school community members. I've shown that itinerary to our attorney and I believe our insurance people have had that what itinerary is. So if they were willing to make a change or say we'd like something changed, that would be something that we could look at and do. Um, again, I think part of it is going to be the two-week time frame, uh, whether it gets better or gets worse. Um, that, that's the piece for me right now. Okay. And given that Mr. Pitsley's fine with sort of waiting, uh, I know we cause him more work, and I don't try not to do that, usually. But sometimes it's fun. Yeah, uh, I agree. <laughs> Any other questions that you have? Uh, no. Thank well, you. thank you very much for coming up. Mr. Pitt. So I didn't, I didn't bring up some of these, these plans. There, there are things in the works. So if we are allowed to go, uh, there's been extensive work that's been done on preventative measures, on what happens if measures uh, with our tour agency, with those things. I put those on pause waiting to, for this meeting. 
Um, but there are many things that w I've talked to our company about. I've talked to the school nurse about. Um, she gives me constant information in my mailbox every day with the newest updates. Um, so there are those pieces so that if we get to a point where there's a waiver situation or whatever, there, there is a plan in place for that. Um, and we can answer those questions along the way. Um, there was one other quick piece to that, the insurance question. That's certainly something we'll be revisiting now that this whole incident has occurred this year, is how can we do this better? How can we encourage it more? Can we find a better insurance plan for students? Uh, those are things that certainly are something that's on our radar. So just want to point that out. I think like anything else, Mr. Pisley, sadly, we learn from the lessons that we get and we have to deal with. Don, you had a question, so please come on up. Welcome, Mr. Baldwin. Thank you. Hi, Don Baldwin, 92 Thomas Street. Um, I want to, one, agree with everything that Sue said and um, actually Brian has said as well. Um, you know, a lot of points that I was planning on making have already been made. Um, one of the questions I was going to ask was, okay, if, you know, the parents said, we want to do this, you know, is there a waiver that could be drafted that protected the town, protected the school, and still gave us the opportunity to go? So, yes. from conversations that I have with our, our attorney, probably not. And the reason being is it doesn't apply to all of you as much as it applies to what comes back. So if you will, it not only puts us into liability for you guys going out, but if you bring something back and hurt somebody else in the school, a teacher or another student that gets the virus, that's where it becomes problematic. So that we okay. had a long discussion about waivers. And as you know, part of, the, part of what you get from attorneys is that, well, you can still sign a waiver, but there's still problems with waivers for the most part. Yeah. Um, but that was her bigger concern too, which was what happens if somebody brings something in. So it, it's twofold to mm -hmm. some extent, if that makes sense. Yeah. No, I, I, I back on that question. Sure. Then, then can we get a, an opinion from our town council as to, or I'm sorry, our school council as to what we're going to do with uh, our sports programs, um, because that's coming up very quickly as well. And we, are we going to be revisiting sports programs for the entire spring semester? MBA is canceled at this point. Are we, is MIA talking about canceling? Yes. They're talking about canceling MBA, everything. MIA canceled the championships this weekend. Right. MIA moved but back. All the all, spring. All spring. Yeah. Um, so they, they have. I mean, yeah. that's just. NHL today also. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I know. I, just, I see that, but. And Major League Baseball and NCAA March Madness is canceled. No. They just canceled that? I yeah. didn't see that. Okay. Yeah. I knew Mr. they canceled the people. Through you, Mr. Chair, I mean, my, my personal opinion, and it may not be a problem, while we're under a state of emergency, we can't let anyone go anywhere because that's the issue. You know, the problem is we don't know how long that state of emergency is going to be, especially with the three trips spread out the way they are. Um, but to go to that s sports analogy, like the, the NBA canceled, then the NCAA tournament canceled, and then the MIA canceled it, and then the MIA says that spring sports aren't starting, I think, until March 30th. I know colleges have canceled entire spring seasons where coaches are on Twitter saying they're going to fight for kids' senior eligibility because they lost a year of playing time. So this is happening all over the place. I just have my cousin in, um, she's out in Ohio, so that Ohio, Kentucky, and Maryland are closing all schools mandatory for three weeks. So... As much, as much as I'm hoping things get better, as much as I'm hoping this is just a one day off on Friday, unfortunately, we're looking at situations where we have to think long term and how is this going to impact. Um, we already mentioned schools and other districts are closing down for two weeks and things like that. Um, now, as far as the parents, I, I don't, if a parent wants to bring their kid to Disneyland next week, if a parent wants to bring their kid to Canada in two weeks, that's absolutely fine. If the parent wants to organize that trip, bring the kids and their friends and go, that's fine. But as long as we have Middleborough Public Schools, Middleborough High School attached to it, I, I don't think it would be responsible for us to vote to allow that, even with a waiver, because I keep thinking back to the poor, poor girl from Holy Cross um, College, you know, in the, the rowing accident. She was in a school van, and just the lawsuits that emerged from that, not only on, you know, the, the van company and the school, but also the poor, poor coach who was driving that van. So there's a lot of issues when it comes to liability. We have to play it safe, especially while we're under a state of emergency. And 
the governor's ordering. If the state of emergency is dropped, and then we're in a different scenario. And so. it's, been, it's been hard for us, too. I mean, uh, Greg and I had this conversation earlier, which is there's a fundamental problem when the NBA team and the NHL team have decided they can't play in the venue that MIAA had said up until today they were still going to play in for the state championships. And the same applies to, I think, the NCAA is a perfect example. They were, their initial plan was to go without uh, fans. They had set that up all along, had decided to do that. And then today, Kansas, it's the number one team, basketball team in the country for men, decides to opt out completely, as does Duke. And all of a sudden, they all change the tune. And so in some re respects, everything's changing so fast and in an interesting way that none of us have ever seen before. I mean, you know, so to we're on the beginning of something none of us have ever experienced before or have any idea of how to do it. We've never canceled a, a sort of a day to, I, I think in the past, I was trying to remember this with Hutch, I think one time that I can recall that Middleborough closed the school because the stomach virus was going through at the time with all the kids. The and so that was the only one that I can think of that maybe happened or I can't even remember if they did it over a weekend, much less the way it is. Um, so it's tough. I mean, you know, that's the biggest piece for us. So, yeah, yeah. And I, I understand the situation that you're in. And, and honestly, I, I would not want to be in no. in that situation. Um, I wish none of this happened. Um, I mean, my son's a senior this year. And um, in the fall, when we were trying to decide what he was going to do, because um, he was actually invited to participate in the um, Ambassadors of New England to go to Europe this summer. Um, I'm kind of glad we didn't <laughs> opt for that option. Um, but looking at the price of that, looking at the price of the band trip, looking at the price of the senior trip, um, he opted for the band trip. No, I, you know, I, I, you know, I'll be honest with you. I go through the same thing. So I'll give you my scenario that went down. So I contacted Mr. Pitsley, contacted Mr. Brannigan, uh, Brian and I had met, and then sort of things had calmed down. Mr. Pitsley asked to call me, and we talked over the phone. We had a nice conversation. Mr. Brannigan was at uh, down the Cape. Uh, so everything sort of calmed down, and I sent a text to my two kids. To ask them, my son just graduated last year. My daughter graduated three years ago. So I sent the text to them, and I said, I sort of laid out what was going on, and I said, talk to me about what would happen if I canceled the band trip and I canceled the senior trip. And I got the two polar opposites of my two kids. <laughs> I get from my son, don't cancel the senior trip because it's fun. <laughs> and I said, well, I need some more information, please. <laughs> and he's like, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> I was like, all right, okay, I get it. So I'm not going nowhere with him. My daughter texts me back and says, I'm going to send you an email in a few minutes. So I said, okay. So I get a two-page email from my daughter going over why the band's important. And it's everything that you guys have mentioned. It's the idea of, in her mind, her first and foremost thought was with seniors. You know, this is the trip you dream about. This is the trip you've always wanted. This is the place you wanted to go on. And... Again, you knew Mr. Pitsley's rotation, so you could sort of figure out where you're going, right? And then um, she talked a lot about the ability to perform in front of other people. And by other people, she meant every day you get to perform with your peers, with Mr. Pitsley, and people can hear how you're doing and stuff. And then you're performing in front of your friends at concerts and family at concerts. This is a chance to perform in front of people who don't know you, have no idea how good or how bad you are except for that chance to show them and she you know she made it very clear you can sit at that orchestra and look out and realize when you've had a really good performance or a really bad performance by the way that people look at you and then you know she talked about she went with mr pitsley to new york the year they won um, and how that meant to her um, and so i get it um, you know i it is this is, I've been on this committee for seven years, and I gotta be honest with you, uh, this is one of the more difficult things that I'll ever do on this committee. Um, partially because I completely understand what it means to each and every one of you. Um, and so I am torn, and it is difficult to me.
And it's not the parents. You know, as Sue said, it's money. You'll get over it. Everybody has that. They want their kid to be safe. Uh, but more than wanting your kid to be safe, you want your child to experience life and be excited and happy. And I think for most of the parents here, they realize that by going there, what that excitement and happiness is. Um, and so, as I said, this is probably one of the more difficult decisions I've ever had to make. I can sit there and look at budget and make cuts and make pieces that I realize, but they're numbers on a piece of paper. You are on the finance committee, Don, yeah. you understand that completely. Um, but I'm glad you all came because it's important to put with faces and stuff. And I can't emphasize enough to all of you, um, if we sort of decide to, to not do the trip, um, it breaks our hearts as much as it breaks yours. And I know for some of you that may seem like we just talk, but I can't emphasize enough that that's not the case. We get it. Um, we'll sort of do anything to sort of rebound this and try to figure out a way to make it a presentation that you like and we can do if we can do it. Um, but there's a lot of difficulty going on right now that, again, I can't emphasize enough too, we've never encountered. So we're trying to deal with it as are your parents and your friends. Um, I, d you know, I don't mind waiting and the reason I don't mind waiting is because we want to uh, give every opportunity that we can um, I, to be honest with you, I thought we'd have to vote today because I didn't want to make Mr. Pitsley's life horrif horrified, but my daughter will like that. <laughs> She'll be happy with that. <laughs> She'll be happy that we put more work yeah, on I was going to say, I think the seniors are happy so, with that too. So, <laughs> you know, that's the thing. So I don't want you to walk out of here thinking that it isn't difficult for any of us. And the same token, you know, my daughter didn't go on the senior trip because she chose to go on the band trip at it. That's what she raised money for, and that's what she got money for, as opposed to my, my son, who would prefer to go on the senior trip. That's what he was looking for. And I get the piece about the senior trip, um, what that means, because for a lot of you, you've never, you know, haven't, so a lot of kids haven't been on a trip. They go on the senior trip because that's the one trip that they sort of dream about. And I know Mr. Brannigan sells it as best you can, because anytime you're in an amusement park with Mr. Brannigan, it just seems like heaven on earth. <laughs> <laughs> so... So we have that every day at the school. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Brannigan makes it the happiest place on earth. So let me. Yeah. So yeah, it's tough. Yeah. Uh, I, I like I said, I appreciate everything that you guys are going Thanks. through, um, but just wanted to say my piece. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. Come on down. Ask him come down. Come on down. Come on. Come on. Come on. Welcome, sir. How are you? Good. I'm Greg. Hi, Greg. I wrote a speech. Go right ahead. <laughs> I've gone on the previous two band trips, and they made a huge impact on my life. I have many friends in the band and the other music groups, and these trips made those gr these groups stronger. Last year, we were able to go to D.C. for the music trip, and we visited Arlington National Cemetery, and were able to visit different landmarks there. And, and the graves, and one of the graves we visited was my uncle's, and that was really powerful. And then freshman year, we went to Nashville. I'm not a big country music fan, but I still had a good time hanging out with my friends and stuff. Um, yeah, that's it. I just really want to go. Greg, I do want to add that, uh, you know, Mr. Pitsley's made it a stop every year in Arlington to visit your uncle's grave. And as powerful as it was for you, I know it's powerful for all the kids that get to go no matter what. So thank you for saying that. Come on down. I'm Holly Basterash. I live on Hemlock Street. Um, I planned to come here last week like a pit bull fighting for this trip. And um, I feel like I'm starting to be a Debbie Downer about it. Um, I have never lived through anything like this before. 
I, I'm going through the days looking at the internet, what's happening now. Things are changing so rapidly. I don't know where this is all leading to. We're living in history right now. And I think that's really important for all the students to know this. Uh, I'm nervous talking in public. <laughs> um, but I'm, what I'm also looking at is what are the Canadians doing? Um, they're also having these conversations. Um, I'm wondering, too, in terms of the legal aspect, could things be changing in Canada within two weeks that there are, are un, there are barriers to us, to the children going on this trip? And could that be a recourse for getting the money back? Um, if the trip, if, if things are shut down so much that the trip is not going to look like what was initially thought it was going to look like, could this be a, a legal reason for getting the money back for getting a refund? That's what I'm wondering. Yeah, I would, I would say possibly, I don't know for certain. I mean, the biggest piece is now, as of right now, there's no barrier to entry to Canada. Um, for example, you know, I think it would change if, for example, McGill University closed like some of the, the places are closing. Um, and th but that's not happening. There's not a lot going on um, on the Canadian end. I actually uh, looked today and had some um, viewed online specifically about Quebec, um, what was going on in that area. Um, and it's, for lack of better terms, I would say probably the same thing we heard about three or four weeks ago, which is just, you know, watch out for certain signs, take care of yourself, self um, self-contain if you're if you're feeling these things if you have a real respiratory problem go to the hospital um, i think totally they've had about 49 cases um, in the area which is not a lot um, but we didn't have that many either at the very beginning so i agree with you i think it, as time progresses I, I can't emphasize enough the part of this conversation tonight was more that we thought we had to be done by a certain time yeah. and so we will wait the two weeks in my mind so we can look at it from there yeah, and I, I do think that I read today that they were asking that anybody who was returning to Quebec self-quarantine for 14 days, and they're talking about new measures and suggesting that things could change dramatically, and that the primary concern for them, like it, is public health. And you know, if we are to be viewed as a threat to them within two weeks' time, again, does that give us recourse to getting our money back on this trip? Thank you for talking. <laughs> Mr. Rep. Mr. Chair, just Twitter eight minutes ago, McGill um, suspended classes for tomorrow and they're canceling all events until the 15th. So they're going down a road that a lot of us are going down here. Okay. So. so. That may change. Are there questions or comments? Come on down, sir. Welcome. How are you today? Uh, John Morrison, 48 School Street. Hello, Mr. Morrison. Uh, I'd just like to let the kids know that, you know, today I've seen a lot of parents go up here and really pull for this trip to happen, but with an understanding and a common sense approach to it that makes it all about maintaining their uh, health as well as the health of the, uh, the, the, the larger community that they're going to come home to. So, you know, I think it's pretty important for the students to recognize that parents have got up here and I really are pulling for them and pulling for this trip to happen. So, you know, that's all I have to say is, you know, recognize that your, your parents are here in support of this trip happening, but overall they want your safety above everything else. So, all right. Thanks, sir. Thank Other questions and comments? Again, we're gonna talk about the band trip I don't see anyone, uh, you know, I don't want to shut people out. So I do want to say this though, so everybody knows. Um, we'll do the same thing next meeting. 
Um, it's sort of been, as far as I view, we're not going to make a decision tonight. We're going to talk a little bit about the senior trip next. Um, but I just want those who are here for the band to know we haven't made a decision. Um, we'll make that decision in two weeks based on what we're hearing. That makes sense to everybody? Okay. So with that, I'm going to end this part of it. I'm going to ask Mr. Stevens if he'd like to return because I believe he can return for the senior class trip. Um, before I start the discussion about the senior class trip, I'll, I'll ask any member if they wish to say anything. Mr. Chair. Mr. Tivano. Ibid. I mean, uh, I, I'm in the same boat as Mr. Stevens is in with regards to the senior trip uh, with a fiduciary piece in this, so I'm going to have to recuse myself for this discussion, but I think everyone knows how I feel about it. I'm not trying to put any undue pressure on anyone. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Tivano. Paul, did you want to come up and talk a little about the senior class trip? But guys, before you go, thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, Mr. Branding. I'm going to talk a little about the senior class trip. Sure. Um, first, I just want to say that um, I'm very proud of our school tonight, of just their comments tonight. So just uh, I think it's important to note that. Um, we know that it's an incredibly um, just unprecedented time that we're in. and. Um, for the senior class trip that um, that I started this trip in 1998 and probably close to 2,000 students have gone. And this is the first time we have ever been faced with something just so unprecedented. Um, in our trip, as Mrs. Albanovar had, had mentioned, the fact that we do not have insurance for this trip um, or had not insurance, did not have insurance. Um, but it's also been a trip we've never even thought about it before and maybe over the years that there's been families who have done it on their own But it's never even been a conversation that we've had um, We had our f family meeting last night to go over the trip which was planned for months anyway So the timing was horrible, but it was also good timing as well So when the governor had stated um, or declared a state of emergency I had immediately called our travel people and I think it's important to note for the committee that this tour company that we have used, I've used since day one. So the relationships that are there and their work with us is tremendous. So I had spoken to one of our two tour people and they immediately started in mobilizing our ability for insurance. So um, we are in the process of applying for insurance. So there was paperwork we sent in yesterday. Um, they sent it back that we even needed to do <coughs> send in more paperwork. So we completed um, really almost a biography of each of all 63 students that are, are scheduled to go. Um, and basically what this insurance is, which I think it speaks to a little bit of the, some of the comments made about the band trip, that um, it's really what is called a travel interruption or travel disruption. So if in the event the fact that there is a major closing, so the borders close, the airports close, um, in the case today where Disneyland in California announced that they were closed until the end of March, that would be considered a major travel interruption or disruption. So because of that, it allows for the insurance to almost immediately kick in because it's out of anybody's control. When there is a cancellation that is done out of an abundance of caution, it doesn't create a travel dis interruption because right now Disney World is open, Universal is open, and Orlando is open. So in that case, it is not an interruption. Now, where it would become that? Oh, Teresa. Oh, <laughs> I stand corrected. So, um, so, so in all of those pieces, now in that case, until the end of March. So if in that case, with Disney World being closed, it would create the travel interruption for us. So that becomes actually um, helpful for that, for that money to come back. So um, our goal was, or hopeful, is the fact that it would allow for us to do almost what's similar to the band trip, where we're kind of monitoring and we're seeing where things go. Um, I am hopeful the fact that with our band, with, with the Florida trip, um, that it will allow for us to be able to um, hopefully get almost a full refund if in the event it falls into that category. The one thing that's important to note that is different is that with group travel, 
um, it, it works in a very, very different way, especially with the airlines, because it's not the fact that someone owns the plane ticket. If you were to get a plane ticket on your own or with your family, it's your personal plane ticket. So you can then wheel and deal with the airline to get a voucher or, or a refund, whatever it may be. But in group travel, it doesn't work that way because it's all in, in the group. So one of the things we're trying to avoid is the fact that if a family said, you know, my, my child has his, his or her name on the plane ticket already, I want to be able to kind of go and, and take the ticket and I'm just going to get the voucher and do whatever. It ends up potentially costing more money to do that because you're getting out of a group, which is very difficult to do. So what our travel um, agents are doing for us is they're navigating very carefully with Southwest. They've been very good thus far. Um, and now it seems to be where, um, you know, as Mrs. Batrach had said, that this, it just keeps rolling of things that seem to be happening. So because of that, it may even make it um, with this insurance um, feasible for us. Now, in the case of Disney World closing, it almost guarantees it'd be a refund anyway of those tickets. Now, if it ends up reopening in April and everything is wonderful and life is wonderful again, then that creates a very different scenario for us. So, um, but I'm, I'm pleased that we've been able to at least begin the process of insurance. Um, I think it's important to note that um, with the payment for the Florida trip, um, the fact that I've always overcharged people to make sure that we can give it back to them and not come back in the 11th hour and say they owe more money. So um, I was able to take half of what the cost was and to be able to pay for it out of what has already been paid into the trip. So um, what I had asked families for was $35 to be able to secure that, uh, the ability for us to apply. So today what we ended up doing is creating a, a pretty significant database of all the students that are going. And um, it may end up being that families will start being notified by the insurance company with some maybe paperwork that they need to do personally as well. Um, one of the challenges we do have is the fact that there are still outstanding balances because of the way that we've always run this trip. We work with families to the end. Um, so that's a little bit of a concern for me, but I know that we're working with those particular families as, as needed. Um, but so we are, we, at least we have some things in place for, for that trip, which a week ago we did not. So, um, so Paul, I just want to check with you please. sort of the same way with Justin, which was, can you wait till next meeting before a decision needs to be made? Absolutely, we okay. can. In the case of our trip, which is really different, there's really nothing to cancel because everything is really non-refundable. So for our case, it's really an insurance piece. Now, the one thing about the insurance is that we were given a 10-day window to cancel insurance, which made no sense to us. Why would we cancel insurance? So it's really that we would, whether we use the insurance or not, it's, a, it's an expense that we've done, and we at least have it. We hope we just need to get the confirmation that that they're allowing it to happen, which um, Deb from the tour company felt pretty confident that was going to be the case and we would be fine there. Um, so in terms of waiting, it absolutely it could wait, um, or in terms of a decision, I should say. So. So any questions for Mr. Branning? Thank you, Mr. Branning. Thank you very much. Thank Does anyone wish to speak on the senior trip? Come on down. Welcome. Hi. Hi. My name is Kyle Maloney. I live on 45 Silo Lane. All right. So I'll just start off by saying, so I've done like some research on this. I kind of understand like what's going on. And I know it's an issue, right? You said yourself, a lot of people are going to come in contact with this. A lot of people are going to get sick. It's not really going to matter where we're at, what we're doing. People are going to get sick. Even saying that, I think we're playing a little bit scared by saying that we're just going to cancel this without even getting shut down by the government before it even happens. I think at the end of the day, money does talk here a little bit. We've got like $170,000 on the line. This is serious stuff that our parents have paid, I've worked for. I think you owe it to the families to put the trip through, to say we're gonna go, and we have to assume right now we're going on this trip. And if we get shut down by the government, if Disney World closes or Disneyland, I don't even know which one it is. 
we have to understand right now that we're going no matter what. Because I, I mean, all of my friends, all of the parents I've talked to, we're, we're planning on going. So I'm thinking, we're going to go. If it gets shut down by Disney World, it gets shut down by Disneyland, fine, we get the money back. But it's up to you guys to send this thing through so we at least have a chance. That's all I'm asking for. Anybody else? Anybody else on the senior trip? Come on over. Welcome. An excellent drive. And I just wanted to first thank you for the opportunity to have parents of the school community have the chance to um, give some feedback and have some input in this decision. Um, I think what I want to just offer some support for is the idea of um, waiting as long as possible before making the decision. Um, similar to what other people have said, given a chance to see if there are decisions made by the government that would make it more possible for folks to get the benefit of the insurance um, if things are actually canceled. But if they aren't canceled from that way, let it go through. So I just wanted to offer support for that. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Rao. One, one thing that's come up a lot is a lot of people understand that if, you know, this is, like my view is if there's a state of emergency, people are kind of seem to be on board with that. But the idea of doing everything we can to help them get, meet their insurance requirements is good. I do know a lot of us in this room work with school districts and stuff that automatically canceled these trips, canceled this stuff. So if, if as much as, you know, if there's still a state of emergency in the 27th, then I'd still vote, no, we can't do these trips. But if we can find out what is happening to those trips, because if they canceled today and they're getting their money back or they're getting their insurance, how did they do that? Why do that? I think that would be something beneficial for us to kind of call around and figure out what is going on with the other districts that just automatically canceled today, as opposed to having this form. And I, I do must say, it's awesome having everybody come out and speak. This has been really, really great. So. Greg. I just want to um, <clears throat> make a comment about the the timing of the insurance. A lot of the insurance that I read said that you have 72 hours to apply for the insurance after a trip gets canceled, and that's the canceling event. So if something triggers it other than us, make sure you're on top of the paperwork, getting your money in, because uh, if, the, if the state cancels it, then that could be considered the canceling event. Anyone else? Mr. Chiamanoni. State be damned. And I'll say, that's, as a citizen, I'm sitting here advocating for my son who paid for his trip. Um, whether or not anyone goes, so if you stay home and go to the mall or you go to a dance recital or a dance practice or just talking with your friends, I find it interesting that I, I know we don't want to be in big locations, but I can tell you right now, if you put a bunch of seniors on April vacation here in Middleborough, they're all going to get together, probably do something. Am I right? Yeah. Okay, I figured. They're going to go somewhere. They're going to do something. They, they're going to be exposed to everything, too. And uh, I'm glad you're thinking about holding off to the penultimate moment. And I think that holding off as far as you can would be a great um, piece. Um, like I said, if the, if the federal government shuts things down, then that's a different piece. Disney's only, uh, Walt Disney World's only close to the 31st at this point, and they're expecting to open April 1st at this point. So I just was looking it up in the back there, and my son was texting me. So he's telling me all the stuff. He's watching it live. Of course, he's about five minutes behind. But uh, I, I'm glad you're taking this. Um, it, it's not easy. It's not easy on the other side of that either, but it's not easy as a parent. Um, for the, my son was chastising me even while I was sitting there um, about this that uh, that he really really wants to go. He's like I'm 18, I can go. I said unfortunately it's a school it's a school trip. Um, there is the school committee has to approve it and uh, has the final say for the benefit of all 3,000 students, the faculty and staff, those who might 
um, get sick because of it. So uh, I don't envy what you guys have to decide on that one. But uh, if you decide after April 4th, I won't be there. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you wait till the first meeting after yeah, the election? <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else? Come on down, please. Welcome. Hi, um, I'm Abby McCarthy. I live on 44th Street. And I just wanted to ask if there's any consideration that it's not an international trip. I know the governor um, had a recommendation about state um, going out of state, but if that is um, different to a trip that would be crossing um, state border or country borders. So what had happened was in his original, um, a week ago, the governor put out, he requested no international trip from schools. Um, and then it, he changed it to any uh, cross state trips. So to be totally honest with you, um, we've I've had the discussion with the superintendent, although tonight we're having the conversation about um, the senior trip, the Greece trip. Um, we're gonna have conversation later on about, like we have trips that go to Roger Williams Zoo. And I know that seems odd and crazy, but that, that doesn't fly in compliance with what the superintendent has asked for us. So we will have that discussion too. So I think because the governor changed his, um, with the state of emergency, that's why the senior trip became a discussion. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for coming. Anybody else? Um, seeing no one. Mr. Maloney, can I ask you to come back for one second? Because I have a question for you. I just want to make sure I understood something you said. Um, were you looking for a decision tonight, Mr. Maloney? Yeah. Okay. D that's fair. And, and so um, we've heard that it may make sense to wait. Okay. And so what I can do is I can ask the committee if they're willing to vote tonight. Okay. And so if they're willing to vote tonight, somebody would make a motion to make the vote. If no one makes the motion tonight, that means they would make the motion at the next meeting. But since you requested it, I'm going to ask the question of the committee, if that's okay with you. Yeah. Okay, great. So the chair, chair was wondering if the, any member of the committee would make a vote to make a recommendation tonight. Wait, wait, wait. Hold it. Hold sure. it. <laughs> what are we doing? No, 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 no. Wait a second. No, no, no. Just to wait, be clear. Can you clear? Yeah. Can no, no, no. Just slow down. Here. No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not trying. The reason I'm saying this is this doesn't hurt anything. This doesn't change anything. All it means is, is the committee ready to make a decision tonight? Um, from no one making the motion, it sounds like they're not ready to make the decision for two weeks. That doesn't change anything. The reason I bring it up was Mr. Maloney asked if we could make a decision tonight. And in my mind, since he came here, made a great presentation, explained what you wanted, I feel compelled that we need, I need to ask the board. And I just wanted to make sure I understood it. So it doesn't it, it's not a knock on anything. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. You're doing everything that you're allowed okay. to do. And because you stood up here and asked the question, I feel like I should ask for the committee vote. All right. So th this doesn't hurt. No, so you so guys can overturn me next so, meeting. Uh, I didn't just mess so up So just to be clear, what I'm asking the committee to do right. is to make a decision tonight. If no one makes the motion, which no one has yet, we can make then it we'll make the decision week. next week. All right. Let's the do next it, meeting. guys. Nope. That's fine. So again, does anyone want to make the motion for tonight? Hearing no one, then we'll make, I promise you we'll make a decision in two okay. weeks. All right. But I did want to honor your request. All right. that make that fair? Thank you. Thank you, you very much. I appreciate you coming. <laughs> Mr. Steven. I just want to, I know it's been said before, but I think it's great that you guys came tonight, uh, that you're willing to come down here and say uh, your pieces. Uh, I really appreciate I think you did make a difference tonight. Um, I thought we were going to vote on these uh, tonight. I was under the, I was ready to vote on um, what I could, but I think everybody made compelling arguments to wait it out and to give it more time. So it does help to hear your side of things and to show that your enthusiasm does make a difference. So thank you. So, uh, I just want to say one thing too. Um, how many of you guys are registered to vote? Excellent. So first and foremost, first of all, yeah. So the biggest thing I want to tell you is this. Um, we're the Middleborough School Committee. That doesn't mean we're your parents' school committee. We're your school committee, too. You have every right to come to any one of these meetings and ask us questions. 
you have every right to call us up and ask us these questions. Natalia is to represent the student. You, you have every right to talk to Natalia and ask her to, to bring forth your ideas and your discussion. Um, and so that's okay. I don't want any of you to think, um, you know, and that's why, Ms. Maloney, when you came up and asked a question, I felt compelled to make sure that we were, we were doing it. And it doesn't hurt your cause. It's just you asked for something and you have every right to. And so I'm very proud of you guys to come. Um, I can't emphasize enough. Please come more often. And please come after you guys leave and go on the trip. Um, so that's what I wanted to say. So thank you. What, May? Thank you. Um, I just kind of to piggyback on what you said, we're here for you guys. And so, yes, our, you know, our concern is the district and our concern is making sure that our community is safe. But ultimately, you guys are going to be impacted by this and you're going to be the ones that are affected. And so we want to make sure that we're taking your voices into consideration. So you guys mean just as much as everybody else that is here. So we want you to come, we want you to bring your friends, we want you to be registered voters, we want you to do your research when you come to these meetings because ultimately we have to make the decision for you guys. So it's important that you come here. Okay. Hey, Mr. Chair? As of right now, the trips are still on, as of right now. And one of, one of the things I really appreciate is the amount of respect that everyone who got up and spoke had tonight because I find that I listen much I listen much more t intently to people who have and act respectfully um, than somebody would get up and scream like a crazy person at you. Um, and I think that's uh, a testament to our students here, the students here and the parents here in this community and the understanding that they have. Um, in fact, that was a comment that was uh, messaged to me by somebody else in the community. And I said, I, I saw the same thing. Mr. Uh, for you, Mr. Chair, just a question. Um, if for some reason we do end up closing on the 27th, would we still have a school committee meeting? Uh, we'll find a way to have the school committee meeting at some point that week. We'll make sure we okay. meet Mr. Brennan against compliance and we deal with it. Um, again, sort of the easy thing we can do is just turn it over to the superintendent and tell the superintendent to make the decision. I think that's unfair to the superintendent. We vote on these things. We make the, we approve or disapprove. Um, we have the debate over what trips go through and I don't, I, I feel it's unfair um, if we don't take that back. If we, if, if we decide we need to end the trip, then we're going to do it in a way that you can discuss it and be a part of it and listen to it and find out the reasons that we do that. Does that make sense to all of you? So depending on what happens with school, just so you know that um, the town uh, posts uh, things online. You can see those posts. Uh, I'll make sure that the town's, the school committees, the school's websites all have the listing of when the next meeting is, so you, you can take a look at it there. They usually put the school committee meetings in the cafeteria. I know they're much watched TV occasionally, but a lot of times people don't notice it. So, But I thank you guys for coming. Do you have any more questions of us? Okay, so I do want to end with this, that even if we – if something happens with the trip or it doesn't, we are all looking forward to all of you that first Saturday in June because we'll be the ones giving you diplomas and that means a lot to us. So that's why we want to take your advice and listen to you too. So thank you for coming and thank you for saying what you needed to say. We appreciate it. And with that, I'll move on to the rest of our agenda for the superintendent's report. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Get confused. We're going to do Greece next. So, Greece is the word. I apologize. I'm just overwhelmed with trips today. So, I would ask whoever would like to come up and talk to us about Greece. Thank you. Mr. Burke. Mr. Burke, I'll start with making an assumption, and maybe I shouldn't make an assumption, but you can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm making the assumption that we have a little more time with you and your trip than we, we do. do with most of the other trips. Yes. Yeah, so we have, that's what I was going to say, we have uh, a lot more time with our trip. Um, EF, the company that we go through, just uh, extended it out till April 30th to make a decision okay. um, about cancellation. So right now we're kind of uh, just waiting on that date. Uh, but their uh, policy right now is <clears throat> if we were to cancel, we have three options um, to rebook to a different date, to choose a different destination uh, rather than Greece, 
or uh, individuals can receive a travel voucher um, to be used by the end of September 30th, uh, 2022. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sure. Mr. Burke, has that changed in the last week, their stance? Because there's been a letter that was submitted to EF Tours, written uh, and signed by probably 200 superintendents in Massachusetts, specifically to EF Tours, and, and explaining the situation um, and the urgency of the situation and how unhappy we were with their initial response. Has that changed? It changed a little bit, but um, so this is the most up-to-date information that they sent out today. It was today, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, they had changed, it was initially uh, the end of the month and they switched it to uh, April 30th and they switched the travel voucher from 2021 to 2022. Okay. Jackie Mae Beaton's here also for yeah. high school high school faculty member. Now the question I have, how many are going on your trip and how many are seniors? So we have 24 enrolled and seven are seniors. And I guess obviously you just got that today. So you're going to have conversations with people about what their options. Are. Do you have to choose? Do you have to choose all for everybody, or can you choose a combination? So we can choose a combination if we were to, you know, bump it back to next year. Uh, the seven seniors could opt for the travel voucher, and then the other could choose to go on the trip. And EF also has does does um, tours with colleges too. So it wouldn't be, for example, like they'd have to come back and go with underclassmen. They could pick a college tour that was in their area or their college was going someplace that they had picked through EF tours. They could do something like that. They could. I'm not too familiar with those tours, but right. I know they do offer them. Okay. Mr. Mr. Burke, have you and, and Jackie maybe have you met with the, these students yet or recently in the last week or so to explain their options and the situation and, and what was their reaction? So we had a student meeting on, was it Monday? Uh, yeah, on Monday. On Monday. Um, this was kind of before it you know, blew up the way it did. Uh, and we have a parent meeting scheduled for the following Monday, this Monday coming up. The 16th. Yeah. So we could technically take your situation up at the last meeting in April. Uh, yeah. Because that would be, no, maybe not the last. It would probably have to be the ninth because I think we moved our last meeting because our last meeting would have fallen on vacation week and we moved it to the 30th. So that's not going to help you. Okay. So we're really going to have to make the decision by the ninth for your trip. Yeah, that would work for us. Okay. But, so I, that gives another two tr meetings before we have to deal with this particular trip. Okay. Do you have any questions for us? I don't. Okay. Does anyone have any questions? Great. No question. <clears throat> Isn't Greece currently like under like lockdown, right? I uh, I know that their schools are closed, and okay. I don't know about the lockdown, but I know that they have like closed for two weeks at least their schools. Oh, okay. Yeah, I believe that, I believe that several countries, several NATO countries, are sending in troops to secure the border with Turkey because Turkey's accepting visitors from countries that are off the charts with with uh, items. So. I know that the, that was the report I was reading this at noontime at lunchtime today that I think Poland had sent troops and, and another country, but we're still talking a ways away. You know. And EF monitors all that oh, as yeah. well, so they, they keep us abridged. If it's not a safe area because of a military occurrence, they wouldn't let us go. Mr. Uh, so of the three options, what do you think was the most uh, palatable for your group? From the sense I got from the students, it was to kind of push it back until, you know, the same date, but next year. Like, like do it a year later? Yeah, but I don't know for sure. I haven't really pulled them. Okay. So you, you'd essentially get the majority of your students back because the seven were going to be moving up. Yeah. <coughs> about your feelings through you, Mr. Chair, as faculty members, uh, about that situation? <coughs> where do you stand, I guess, or where do you lean towards? So the, the one thing that... Uh, does cause me a little concern is the cancellation uh, policy that they have that the students um, would lose a $95 deposit their $165 insurance fee and then a $500 cancellation fee um, regardless of if we cancel or even if EF canceled so they would lose um, $760 which I think is of a, a total of a total 
Sorry. What was their total for the trip? It was about 4,200. Okay. Go back to my own kids. <laughs> Just remember and that's it was only the if they have the insurance, too. If they don't have the insurance, they lose the whole $4,000. Yeah. But they will honor vouchers? They will honor the vouchers, And yeah. that includes the insurance moving forward, et cetera? Yes. So they don't lose the $760 if they take a voucher for future travel? Correct. Okay. And what about, so, so if you reschedule the trip for a year from this June, um, they would be unharmed in terms of financial? Yes. Okay. So irregardless of what happens April 9th, it would be better for us to vote not to cancel your trip but to either postpone it or move it to another country if that makes sense because yes the kids would get a better deal yes they would that mm -hmm. way and so okay so oh. mr chair so we'd be really appreciative if if during the parent meeting on monday that that was brought up discussed and maybe you even sent that to us in advance that if the consensus for the entire group were to move it to um, a year from the same date, but a year from now in 2021, God. 2021, um, and that was the consensus. It would make <laughs> that would be easier for us. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we, uh, if that was something that worked its way out, and then even talk with EF to really fine tune it. They might. There may be a loss of insurance. That sometimes happens because you have to buy the insurance again, maybe. But but other than that, that would be great to know um, going in even to our next meeting. So my assumption would be we would either, I mean, even, even without sort of a decision of the families, we should, if we decided a trip was not going to go at this year as presented, that we should probably say to families they, they can either choose to move it because it sounds like multiple people can do it, mm -hmm. or take vouchers because we know, for example, the seven seniors would want to take vouchers because that would save them losing money. Yeah. So that's okay. So that makes sense. Any other questions? Well, thank you. And you know, I, I know how much hard work you guys do to get this trip off the ground, and I can't imagine what a nightmare it's become. So thank you very much for, you. for doing. Yeah, that's a great commitment on your part sure. too. Thank, thank you on behalf yep. of the kids. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is anyone here to talk about the Greece trip? seeing no one then without any objection um, the discussion about the band trip and the <coughs> senior class trip will take place at the next meeting and the following meeting will take place about the greek trip if that makes sense thank you now i will turn it back to you again <laughs> thank you mr chair uh, i'll move on with the with the agenda or my agenda and with regard to uh, the school district i'd invite uh, donnie jameson down if you don't mind donnie thank you uh, Donnie is a member of the Drug Free Communities uh, Committee here in town. Um, she, in your packet, you have a student survey, which is uh, something that we're, we're asking that uh, our students fill out as part of background and data that the folks on the committee need in, in order to fully understand the situation in Middleborough um, and also uh, apply have data for application for grants in the future. Uh, pretty much a little quick summary. It, and I'll it turn is. it over to you, Donnie Jamison. Thank you. Okay. Assistant Principal at the high school. Thank you all. And I brought with me Mario Paul, who is our partner uh, with the Middleborough Matters Coalition and has brought this grant possibility to the middle school. Um, so she's going to share a little bit about that and what can come from that. And I would like to answer any questions about the particular survey, um, the benefits. Um, about asking sometimes uncomfortable questions, and, and that's sometimes what we have to do to get information to do better things for our students. So, um, Marielle, thank you for coming tonight, and we've had a great partnership for going on four years now, so I'm happy to report that. Hi, thank you for having me. Um, so I work for High Point Treatment Center's Prevention Services Department, and in September we were awarded a grant that ties together all the communities that we work with, so it's 10 communities in southeastern Massachusetts. This grant is exciting because it's the first time that all 10 communities have the same grant funding, and it's particularly focused around middle school students. Um, this is the first time we've had a grant focusing on middle school 
um, substance use. So within the grant, it's a lot of infrastructure building to tie all the communities together. And the goal is to survey middle school students from all of those 10 communities to have a baseline of data to then use towards programming in the future. So within all the 10 communities, we're looking to survey sixth, seventh, and eighth grade students. Um, now that could be a sample of those students or we have the capability to survey all students. The survey is a paper and pencil survey. We would provide all of the copies of the um, surveys delivered to the schools with um, pens paper, the paper and pencils and we'd pick them up. They would be um, analyzed by Kelly Research Associates, which is our partner. Um, it is all anonymous. There are no um, names, anything like that. It's a five to 10 minute survey, which you have um, in front of you, I believe. Um, and we have copies of those as well. It's about 10 questions, um, I believe, and it talks about uh, rates of usage and perception around marijuana, alcohol, and um, tobacco and vaping products as well. So really just a, a baseline survey that we're doing um, in all of the communities. So we're here Mariel, to- there'll be a parent uh, sign off? For... Yep, so what we've created in the past, and you guys are welcome to use or tweak to your own, um, liking is a passive consent form so we have a copy of those as well if you did not want your child to participate of course the school committee is able to do whatever they'd like um, as far as as consent but that's what we've provided um, to schools in the past we also have the capability to provide this um, translated if that's helpful for the population in Middleborough um, the passive consent form as well as the surveys Chair, question. I think we've done this before we did at the high school. Um, did, okay, I remember. It, yep. the, I remember the. And the questions are very similar, mm -hmm. but not as mm -hmm. adult. Mm -hmm. I think it was more adult at the high school. It I, was, and it was, I believe yeah. it was twenty-five questions. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I because when I looked at it, because the first thing I when I saw this on that, I'm like, oh my god, because mm -hmm. I was thinking. But then I read it, and I'm like, these are the questions we need to know, especially mm -hmm. because we're seeing this in our, even below but middle school mm -hmm. more and more. I definitely would want to do everybody mm -hmm. because the more data you have, the better data you have, right. not just for our community, but as a whole in 10 right. communities. It's very benign. I like the pencil and paper because mm -hmm. some people are like, I'm a computer person, but you definitely know you, you this is anonymous. You're putting yeah. a check. Right. That is it. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that this is um, data well collected in, mm -hmm. For, I mean, it's been asked at the selectmen's meeting. We've heard it at the selectmen's meeting. What's going on at our middle school? What's going on? Mm -hmm. And we don't even we, we don't have those numbers mm -hmm. specifically to our town, right. but this would really um, get us some real data. Mm -hmm. um, and I and we have to have this, unfortunately, and because uh, I know parents don't always get the answers, and I know mm -hmm. I probably don't get all the answers, and I have a pretty close relationship with my kids, right. but. Um, no, I appreciate you guys doing this. It's uh, and I'm, I, I, I can't. I, I don't want to say I can't wait to see the, the results, but I, I'm glad we're going to have the results. Yeah. And and the programming that comes from the results too. It can yeah. really you know Help. guide us Help in us. what what we should do. You know, we don't want to um, implement programming that's that's not geared around the stuff that's happening. I, and it would identify risk factors in the community mm -hmm. and within the community so that, that you can then bring supports in mm -hmm. if right. need be mm -hmm. with the grant money. Right. Mm -hmm. And we've had some programming that we've done together at the high school and in all honesty it hasn't been well attended and, and we would love for this data maybe to encourage parents once we produce it so that when we do the programming based on the results that maybe mm -hmm. that would encourage more people to attend the programming because we're having the open and honest conversations and I think that's really would for me would be a jumping off point for families. And, and I was thinking, Mr. Chair, I was thinking that this, I remember thinking this as, as, as at the high school one, I, maybe if one person opened up mm -hmm. to, and looked for the help, mm -hmm. real, this, this could be a, that trigger of saying, mm -hmm. hey, I need help. Mm -hmm. And I hope that if someone does need it and this triggered it, we, we be able to help that one person, that one student. Um, I think they, it, it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's such a benefit to mm -hmm. have this information, but it, it, could, it could do other things for us too. Mm -hmm. And I think if we put it in the hands of the parents afterwards, every parent should know the data, because maybe they will have that, that conversation, mm -hmm. and not from the standpoint of what did you do, mm -hmm. but. Well, I think the question's asking about the friend's usage too will give kids the opportunity maybe to, 
to divulge some information that it's very, very hard for them to have those conversations with anybody. Mm -hmm. And if they can put it anonymously down, that might spur a conversation. I, I think that's a real gift <coughs> to, to a student. Uh, within our team, too, we have lots of resources. So if, those, if it did spark somebody who needed help mm -hmm. and started in those conversations, we have tons and tons of printed resources um, that we could provide, and we do provide already to both the high school and the middle school to have available in the guidance office or whatever that might be. So I guess that's my question more than anything yeah. else, which is becomes how do we prep teachers for giving out the exam yep. and not just taking the exam, but if a kid comes forward, and because mm -hmm. the kid's going to come forward to the teacher, yep. as we know, they're not going to come forward to the guidance counselor, they're not going to, you know, yep. that's who they're going to come forward to. Well, I, I would think, and I can't speak on behalf of the Nichols sure administration, no, but well, <laughs> well, no, I, I think they're very equipped to handle that. I think their counseling staff is excellent. I think a conversation maybe at a faculty meeting outlining some protocols on, on what to do. Um, I know staff is trained on, on to report things, um, but I, I think giving them the tools to say when someone offers you this, this is what we're going to have available. So I, I think a you know, half hour at a faculty meeting, um, and if one of us could attend to help, we could, mm -hmm. um, but they're very equipped to handle those conversations. And the only other thing, I'm absolutely in favor of doing this as I have been from the beginning. The only thing I'd like to see is sort of the follow-up, mm -hmm. yeah. which becomes, you know, we give out uh, to grades and then we gap for a little while. Yeah. But then we don't, you know, so last time we did the high school mm -hmm. and that now we're doing the middle school. So I'd like to see us go back to the high school when these kids are there to yeah. see mm -hmm. if changes have been made based on, you know, like us looking at what programmatic pieces we want to change mm -hmm. and then seeing mm -hmm. how that affected outcomes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So with this particular funding source, um, we do have the capability to, to serve a middle school students for five years. So it wouldn't capture those people to, um, that go up to the high school. Um, and unfortunately, with the, with the survey tool in the past, the grant that we had didn't cover it. So it wasn't as robust, I guess I would say. This grant that we have for five years has surveying written into the grant for all five years for the Excellent. middle school. Fantastic. Any other questions? So I think the goal was to get this done before April vacation. Yeah, ideally before April vacation. So we, Marielle and I could work with the middle school and for them to have a time frame that works for their, mm -hmm. you know, their day. Mm -hmm. If no one objects, the chair would send a motion to approve. So moved. Do a second. Second. Discussion. Hearing none. Any questions from the audience? Seeing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Chair, next on my agenda are some miscellaneous surplus. Uh, as you know, we have a policy on surplus materials that when we determine uh, and come up with a list of surplus, it then uh, needs to be voted by the school committee as such and then goes through a process which includes offering up to any other town departments which in this case uh, would probably, they'd probably not want some of these things. Uh, but then we would go to the next step, which would mean basically offering them up uh, elsewhere. And there are book companies and there are companies that do purchase things. There are other school districts that are still using these. These are a little bit outdated for us and we've upgraded, but there are still communities that are still using DRA kits and ALM. Uh, the, the, the Russian is, is an old Russian system 96. There aren't many schools that are still offering Russian. Uh, but the rest of those uh, DRA kits, uh, which we've replaced by what's called BAS kits or benchmark assessment systems, uh, would, be, would be probably very attractive to neighboring school districts. I know for a fact that Bridgewater Rainham is still using DRA extensively and needs to buy materials. So I would just need a vote to, to, de to determine these as surplus or declare these as surplus. Thank uh, you. Mr. Chair. Yes. I would move that we declare the uh, February 27, 2020 uh, surplus list as surplus. Do I hear a second? Second. Discussion. Hearing none, those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Next on my report is the Reeds Collaborative uh, projected building lease. And uh, I attended a board of directors meeting today where the board of directors voted uh, to go forward with a proposal that came from the Reeds Collaborative uh, to lease a building at uh, 44 Bedford Street, which is the old Travelers Insurance Building at the Rotary, uh, and they're going to have a company that's they're going to sort of lease it from a company that's going to buy the building, and 
gut it and create a school and along with a gym on the outside. It's a dream that they've had. Last year, the Reeds Collaborative came forward with a proposal to build a $33 million building and uh, that was not approved at the time uh, by the banks or by the board. And uh, this is a much more reasonable request. Uh, they're looking forward to uh, some clean uh, educational space that's been built out just for them. And uh, the board, like I said, voted today to approve this. Uh, unfortunately, it does involve uh, a good deal of money, which are going to be uh, the, basically the tuitions for kids that go to Reeds is going to go up uh, incrementally over the next few years and to the point where they can afford the rental on this building. Uh, it's considerable, uh, but it is a beautiful facility and it will be a beautiful facility. And, uh, uh, and that on the other end of that is we will most likely lose our lease uh, that we, the rental that we get from Reeds Collaborative for School Street School. Um, but we will certainly, as we move, that, that will end in the uh, June 30th of 2021 uh, by design here. And then we would be certainly prior to that, be looking for a new tenant in that building, certainly whether it be a Pilgrim Area Collaborative or a South Shore Collaborative or anyone like that that might want a space that's designed um, as a therapeutic day program. We've done some extensive build out inside the School Street School to the tune of about $10,000 a year, replacing windows uh, and replacing everything in the building, boiler, um, new Rialo boiler. We did uh, uh, some support rooms for students and uh, so, it's hopefully it remains an attractive place for people to lease, uh, but that's the current state of the Reeds Collaborative and, and what they're doing here in town. And, uh, you know, there's been a lot of discussion about the Rotary, and the Rotary's better off now. We, we, I think we all agree with that. When you go to the Rotary, it's not the horror show it used to be. Uh, but they have uh, looked extensively uh, at a lot of different places, and this was the answer that came upon, or that they came upon in terms of uh, the best place uh, possible for, and it's still in Middleborough. So, uh, yes. Do you think, um, since I'm going to imagine a lot of us haven't been in there in quite some time, that maybe by the time we hit the summertime, we could just do a walkthrough of that building? Of School Street? Yeah. Or of the Bedford School Street? School Street, just to... that's been offered also, if you'd like to lo go to that location. No, I'm fine with, you yeah. know, the... the oh, certainly. The, we, we, but I'd like we, to see, you know, so Completely can, repainted that building. Um, right. It really is, it's, it's, you know, it's a facility, so... so we can but it's a 1907 here. school, too. It's a 19... Well, I'll tell you, the stuff from 1907 to 1929, 1927, or the, whatever, mm -hmm. the middle... That, those buildings are built to last forever, just with, with, with a lot of love. We may only spend, quote, $10,000 worth of materials, but we spend a lot of labor because we have the ability to in our own staff doing yep. it. And uh, I know um, Hutch has spent a lot of time making yes, sure yes. that, that uh, in, in the previous facilities director, they were working on that. I, so I know that, that that work's been going on. Um, never know Massasoit or anyone else, but like you said, one of the other collaborators may want to come into town and offer more services that they could couldn't. be, and originally, uh, Brian, through you, Mr. Chair, that the, the Massasoit was really going leaps and bounds in terms of expanding their programming, at, and with Doug Wallow, the dean at the time, and since he's been replaced, to it certainly be it's been a little bit de-emphasized, and the Canton program, the Brockton program, have been more emphasized by Massasoit under new leadership at Massasoit. So, uh, hopefully, that might change too. Uh, they were looking for additional space in Middleborough, so you never know what's going to happen with that space. But I would tell you that that uh, we will, in all likelihood, uh, be losing the lease on Reeds Collaborative in June 30th, 2021, and prior to that, hopefully be looking for a new tenant uh, to take up that, because we do rely on that income, uh, facilities rental, uh, for things such as purchasing vehicles for the maintenance and grounds and things such as that, and occasionally, if there's an emergency, uh, so that money obviously does come in handy. Uh, I was gonna say the other thing I think we should look at, too, to some extent, is depending on who's, if, if we rent that building out and people, other people take over that building, depending on what's going on with that building, looking at the ability, for example, on weekends to do parking there. Because that's right behind a section of buildings for the town uh, that, you know, and, and we've been, t people have talked to us before about, hey, can we park there? And we've, our conversation's always been, well, we rent it out, a school owns it, but if in the lease itself, there was a piece that townspeople could park there doing, you know, again, this would be a, a, an organization that wasn't using it during the weekend. We, we've certainly allowed that for, yeah. for yeah. currently for anyone, uh, the Alley Theater, 
on things such as that if they moved if they use the they can certainly use that parking lot at night it's a public parking lot yeah. so uh, it is something that that they certainly have used and we've talked to mr fuller the owner of that building and, and uh through Lona Burnell, the leaser of that building and uh offered that up to my, them my concern's always been what happens to Benny's in that property because at some point the town doesn't own the parking lot behind Benny's and all right. that. It's actually owned by Benny's almost down to beyond the, the charred oak. Right. Um, pretty much that whole public parking lot is owned by Benny's, that, that holding company. I so, did not know that. Thank and, you. and we usually lease it for a dollar with the understanding that we maintain the parking lot. That's kind of when the, that, that's, the town leases it for a dollar, but they may have to maintain it. Um, so that's that was one of my concerns is at some point Benny's may sell, sell that property we no longer have a lease somebody puts up a fence and our entire downtown has 170 spots at the at the, uh, at the town hall sure. good thoughts Thanks. there are no further questions next to my report are, are some articles for the town and special town meetings uh, and miss Sarah Hickey is going to give provide you with an update uh, with some good news Thank you. Um, last Friday, Superintendent Lynch and I submitted two articles to um, to Bob Noons for the town meeting. I'm going to uh, go through the easy one first with you. It, it's actually the longer one, but it's easier to deal with. Um, the there's a federal reimbursement available through t Title Four E, and uh, the reimbursement would be for transportation for foster care students. And in order for us to apply for reimbursement for the foster care transportation, uh, we need to enter into a memorandum of understanding uh, between the Middleborough Public Schools, the Department of Children and Families, the Executive Office of Health and Human Services, and the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. The, mem the memorandum of understanding um, can only be entered into after it's approved by town meeting. So um, the first article, fairly straightforward, just asks, do we have permission to enter into this agreement to get reimbursement? Sure. I myself will be voting against that because of the ex explanation. If we enter into an agreement that we will then receive only 20% of the money that, we're re that we should have received, and as the person who made that original McKinney-Vento, I get on my soapbox every year, that, that original original vote that was taken was that we do not willingly accept this would be a willing acceptance of 20 percent on the on uh, 20 cents on the dollar it, moving forward i'm not even i don't even know what's going backwards and the concern being that if we don't get what is rightfully ours from the state i would i, I would fight to the end and go after it they owe it to us they have to pay us the the state it may be a federal piece but the state accepted the federal uh, under the Constitution of the United States, the federal government can't force the state to accept it. The state accepted it, then handed it to us and said, we have to do it. Well, we did not willingly accept it, we do it. Um, and that was how the vote was taken. So under the non-willing acceptance, under Proposition 2 and a half, we should be getting reimbursed. I don't care what anyone says, we should be going and fighting for this money. Hundreds of thousands of dollars, probably close to a million and a half dollars right about now, over the last nine years. That we've been doing this but i understand that just it, it annoys me i definitely i'll be at town meeting saying don't do it because i'd rather i'd rather we don't we can't give up this money we should be fighting more and more and i've i I've, i say it to the governor i say it to everyone and everyone just looks at me like a deer in headlights because you know what they want they don't want to say you're absolutely right we did not willingly accept it all the other communities in Massachusetts did. The moment you vote for something, you willingly accept, unless you say, I'm not willing, we, we do it without willingly accepting. That is how you take votes. That's how that's, that was voted. Now I'm off my soapbox. Now I'm all wrong, right? Better to take 20 cents than nothing. <coughs> Thank you. Um, the second article for special town meeting, we have incurred expenses for private transportation for out-of-district students. We've incurred expenses in excess of what was budgeted. And so the second article that was submitted was to move money um, between accounts. So the transportation accounts we are held through the town, not through the school department. So we have the 900 accounts, which cover the first student buses, the special um, contracted uh, 
special ed transportation, McKinney Vento homeless transportation foster and foster care. Um, that those 900 accounts are short this year, but we have an excess in the 899 accounts, which are our minibus salaries, our crossing guard salaries. So I'm moving pieces of money from those accounts and then from the operating budget in order to cover the shortfall in the 900 accounts. <laughs> those have been submitted to town meeting. Um, just so everyone understands, those are the only two articles we're submitting. We're not asking for more additional funding because we have been able to make up the funding in our current budget. I heard that rumor, Mr. Chair, and, and I actually heard it from three different people, Finance Committee, Finance Committee, and a select person that all said that, you know, thank you, and I, I said, thank you for giving you what, giving us what you give us, um, and we've always tried to fit it in if we can, yep. um, but that doesn't mean tomorrow morning we don't get a call or someone walks in and registers a child. And, Absolutely. And, I, and I, I said, but at least at this moment, we can take a deep breath and say, thank God. Yep. Uh, we're able to cover it. <clears throat> and finally, an additional good news, uh, every year we're informed from the federal government through the state uh, about additional supplemental money that comes into some of our grants. Uh, we were informed that for the, my, I was originally informed that our Title I grant would be added on uh, by $1,253 uh, of a $435,000 grant. And then Mrs. Latender, who's our uh, Title I coordinator, uh, got a secondary email yesterday that said, oh, we seem to have made a little bit of a gaffe and, and you have another $70,800 coming your way. And we thought that was money that was going to, that was destined to go elsewhere because it's almost the exact amount that we pay to the Chamberlain School every year. And the person said, no, that is the school districts. So that's another $70,800 uh, that we can actually carry over to next year and pay salaries, uh, pay whatever we want out of that, supplies. Uh, so that sort of maybe loosens up the, the budget just a little bit more in terms of some of the things that we have to do and because as the budget subcommittee has reported and we have reported, uh, next year's budget is, is a tight one. Um, so that's some good news, all right? To end my report, thank you. Um, a piece of information not on your agenda because it just came to me tonight at nine o'clock from the governor's office. Um, uh, Governor Baker has announced an emergency order modifying the state's open meeting law. According, according to the, the order as presented, um, you no longer required public access to the meeting as long as you can provide other ways for the public to get in. And they use the examples of a phone, social media, or other internet or streaming services. In addition, um, it is no longer a physical requirement that the majority of members be present in one location. So in theory, the superintendent and I could sit in his office and conduct a meeting via phone where you call in and um, register in that way. Does so, it require acceptance by the town or just this board? No, it's an emergency order, so it requires the, it's- it just, happens. just happens. Right, so it's an emergency order from what I understand that is uh, temporarily modifying, so it is only gonna be in for a while. Um, so we'll obviously have to figure out what that public access piece is if we chose to use it. Um, but that will be something clearly as the days go on, I will ask you about if you feel we should look that way. And uh, Mr. Chen, it's been coming down the road, but yeah. because it, I believe it's also, it, we have to live by the same requirements with regard to open meeting law. So we can't right. just the posting hold the phone occur. meeting, a uh, school committee right. meeting. It has to be posted in advance. Um, I also know that, um, for example, given what's going on, there was another directive laid out that, uh, that I heard about, and that, to be honest with you, I haven't seen it yet, that the attorney general's office was going to allow broad leeway in the term emergency meetings, which makes sense. So for those who needed to post in 48 hour notice, Obviously, if you could make the case it was an emergency and couldn't post, as long as you were posting whenever you could, and went from there, it made sense, which, again, makes sense given the times we're in. So I wanted to bring that up. Yeah, but normally it's 48 hours pursuant yep. to Mass General Law, Chapter 38. 
Next up is the consent agenda. Motion to uh, approve the consent agenda as presented this evening. Door here, second. Second. Discussion, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, other than, do you want to thank Mr. Fisher um, for uh, the Fisher's pub sale, so we appreciate that. Yes, absolutely. David Fisher's always good to us. He and his, his wife uh, and their entire restaurant group. So MSBA meeting, um, we have 52% um, of the building is completed. And again, can't emphasize enough, we are still under budget. Um, for, I'm assuming the school committee members would probably be invited too if we wanted to for the walkthrough. Absolutely, it's March, March 28th. March 28th. Um, if you can, it's a Saturday morning. We're gonna walk through at 10 a.m. Um, I would caution this that although the school committee member be there and the building committee it is not an open meeting because it is a walkthrough in a construction area so um, that's important hard hats required hard hats sensible required shoes. sensible chair. shoes and hard hats mr chair yes we're still we're, we're at six percent of our contingency budget having been spent so far um with if everything that was being haggled over and, and negotiated would be at 11 percent at this point which is still great and they've made up about 11 days on their their 18 so far so as of yesterday at 4 53 p.m or whatever it was uh, seven days but still well within our window um, for getting that building in november and the move in for a january opening um also on a related matter, we, the superintendent and I had assigned the updated budget with MSBA that included that obviously you don't want to change the budget if you think you're under budget right away. You want to make sure you are truly under budget. So we've compressed those numbers even further and clearly under budget. So we submitted a new budget to MSBA, making sure that we complied with all the requirements. So the superintendent and I submitted that the other day, along with uh, Rob DeRoges and the uh, town manager. We all had our four signatures on that. Any other questions about MSBA? So as, as a reminder to everybody, the Rotary Club annual charity auction is this weekend. Uh, the Rotary has been very, very good to us um, and consistently helps students in our area. So we wanna make sure that people watch the Rotary auction and participate in it. So get your paddle and have a good time. Um, superintendent evaluation will be up uh, by the end of the month. We also have to turn it in. The, uh, the instrument will be, I can put it in the mail tomorrow. Yeah, that's what I'm In, in boxes tomorrow. And then I'll have my memo prepared by midweek next week. <clears throat> okay. I meant uh, to try to get it done yesterday and today, but coro yeah. coronavirus got in the way. S <laughs> Superintendent <laughs> and I, <laughs> coronavirus, that's all I need to talk about again. Uh, Superintendent and I, are spending the day on the hill May 5th. I believe Mr. Stevens thought long and hard about attending. I mean, still thinking. So if others want to attend, you're more than welcome. It's a fun and rather exciting day. Cinco de Mayo on the hill, if you will. Uh, policy update. Third reading of emotional and therapy support dogs in schools. Motion to approve the third reading of the therapy emotional support dogs in school. Very second. Discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It is now policy. Great news. Thank you all very much. And then lastly for my night, in your packets was the updated memorandum of agreement between the MEA and the school committee. It has to do with um, the uh, class schedule at the high school. Yes. I move that we approve the memorandum of agreement with the change in high school scheduling as presented. And allow the chair to and sign. And allow the chair to sign on our behalf. Do I hear a second? Second. Discussion. Mr. Chair? Yes. This would mean the schedule would change for the 2021-22 school year, not this September, uh, which would allow us to get into the new facility and work out some other pieces that I know that this group has been working hard on. So um, I think it's great that you guys are going to continue to work on it. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. And the chair just signed it. So I'm going to give it back to you, Mr. Superintendent. Sir. Thank you. 
Um, with that, again, um, our next meeting is supposed to be March 26th. Um, we will hold a meeting in some place, somewhere that works out primarily to do those particular pieces that we talked about tonight. Um, we live in a different sort of place, as obviously, as I mentioned, that there's a new piece about open meeting law. Um, we will do what's best for the community. Um, and so we just ask people to be safe and be sane and make good decisions. Um, and if they have questions about everybody else, um, just call and ask. It's important. And that, that calling and asking means the schools, means the superintendent's office, and means one of us. Just so everyone knows, while I'm, we were here tonight, I got a text from a state rep who said, it, does somebody in Middleware have coronavirus? <laughs> so I immediately said, short answer, no. Uh, long answer, I'll talk to you after the meeting. <laughs> so, so I think that's important. So just keep in mind, the next meeting is 26, where we'll be assessing the band trip and the senior trip. Right. We do not have to discuss the... The Greece trip will be Greece the following trip. meeting on the April 9th. Yeah, the 9th has to be to Just so people know when things are being no, discussed. that's perfect. Hey, Mr. Chair? Yes. If we had to add another meeting before the election in April, um, I'd definitely... To, to discuss Greece, if, if it would, whatever, or any of the trips, I definitely would be on board for that. But um, just to be clear, Mr. Giovanoni, I'm not letting you get out of your last meeting. No, 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 I'm not, <laughs> I'm not saying, I, I'm just saying, if we have to add another last meeting, I, 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 I don't want to go. I understand. <laughs> With that, the chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. D discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you very much, everybody.